Doing a sound check here, folks. Can you hear me? Hey, Ram, how's it going? Yeah, we'll get started in a couple minutes, still bringing in some folks in the Zoom room. YouTube's starting to fill up, so we'll just hang out for a few minutes. Oh, there he is, Mike. Hey, Michael. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome back. Now just a, a couple more minutes, folks. I'm going to just go offline just for a second here and get some water so I can get going here. I'll be right back. All right, so just want to do a sound check for the folks over on YouTube. Make sure we're, we've got good sound over there, and that would be helpful. All right, so it looks like we got everybody going. We're still having fun in the markets, folks, right? So, yeah, good deal. I just got a few more people to let in, then we're, we'll kick off. And I, I think what we're going to do today, we're going to go through, I'm going to try to get a show of hands if you're new to WaveTech, if you'd let me know. I'm new. I'm uh, planning to sign up um, for the membership this week. I created with a free account uh, for the dashboard okay. the other day. Yeah. So I thought I'd hop on and I've been following your YouTube 
videos I've been enjoying it very much. Um, so I thought I'd hop on this. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so anybody on YouTube, if you're if you're new or interested, what I try to do in the beginning of these meetings, just kind of do a, a quick review of of the basics of what the product's doing, uh, what it does, what what you're going to be able to do with it, and what it's meant for, and and then we go through. And I I want to bring it up, but we've got. Uh, a lot of folks online that I want to be able to have questions asked so that we can get some real interaction going here. Okay. Yeah, just one second, folks. I've got one issue going here. Just having trouble. Zoom hides things sometimes. Here we go. I'm trying to get some folks admitted here, and it's not letting me get to the dashboard, so bear with me. Okay, looks like the last group is in now. Welcome everyone. We are doing these every week on Wednesday at this time. And we've been, you know, I'm, I'm willing to go for, for a while to get this job done. The goal here is to introduce as well as train on using the tool. At some stage, you should be become very proficient. I'm going to put it up on the screen here, so wave text up on the screen, and uh, talk about several things. We did. Uh, I know I, we've got some folks in uh, European users and other folks. If you experienced uh, last night, we our hosting company that's actually out of Dallas actually had an outage for I think about six hours last night. And it turns out that part of it was planned. It was a planned outage that went wrong, is what at least basically what they what they said to us. But anyway, the the product here. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up a PowerPoint just to kind of grind grind through some some basics here, and just so you can see exactly what we're gonna do. We will continue to focus on building portfolios and understanding how they're used and some of the power of, of doing these. And one of the things that this product was meant for is actually giving you ability so you don't, you know, a lot of folks are day traders and have time to sit around the markets. Well, this is an end of day product. And this is something, and we've talked a, a fair amount about this over the last several weeks, is that this is a way where you can actually build your own mutual fund, if you will, and especially with the with the world that we live in now, which is a no no transaction cost world, that is giving us the ability which to do 
to do more trading for free, but also build larger portfolios. And the by larger portfolios, we also we're, are going to be in need of the fractional shares. And at some point down the road, uh, we we thought we would be there already, but we're really close. We're going to roll out a next version. We're going to roll Portfolio Expert out. And, and we're going to be talking a lot about what's called direct dynamic indexing, which is a, a lot of a lot of things moving around. We're, the thing that's holding that up right now is we're trying to get the ability which to automate the trades from the platform. So, and you can route them to your custodian of choice. So for now, we're, we're trying to work on that. We're even working on a precursor, which would be just being able to export and import to your custodian. The issue is we're used to dealing with investment advisors, and there's a lot of platforms there that allow you to do batch orders or do uh, basically baskets of stocks. And those aren't, they, it doesn't appear that a lot of that type of functionality is available to the public. And we're trying to figure out how to actually authenticate that. And that's one of the things that that will be important to understand. So as we go through the product, this is what it's about. It's about managing money. You have your day trading money. You have your trading money. You can, you, you this is going to be focused on how to actually build wealth over time, how to manage downside risks, those type of things. And I will touch on the fact that there are 16,600 plus symbols in here that will give you lots of trading ideas. So there's certainly trading ideas. And uh, I'll do a pre-announcement for those folks. I know there's a lot of fans and people that have actually embraced this at this level, subscribing to the the software and also being part of the YouTube channel is tomorrow on the live stream, I'm going to be introducing a friend of mine and we're going to start to talk about how to use the platform and how to use options with them and setting up trades and stuff. And when you meet, there'll be an appropriate time that I can introduce who's coming on. I would just tell you they were one of the original players in Thinkorswim and and so it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to talk about in doing all types of strategies and bringing in options trading as well. So, but let's go back to the, the main premise of, of the product here, which is, we'll, we'll talk a little bit, if you're new, navigation, getting around the product. This product that you, you have is basically an old school product. We, we put a few more, we put a few new icons in it. We basically, as, as the, the old term goes, we put lipstick on the pig, made it look a little better, it's still a pig, but it is very functional in doing all the things we're doing. We still have a whole group of investment advisors that are on this platform. And so what we're doing now is bringing the investment strategies out to the public and allowing them to be able to do that. The old saying that no one cares about your money more than, than you, this is exactly why this product is going to be really helpful. And once you learn how to use it and bringing in some real money management and being able to manage multiple symbols. So you can you could put 500 symbols and you could trade them all. We're going to the software is going to tell you when to buy and sell them, how much to buy and sell, risk balancing. It's going to do all of those things. And so th that's what this product's about. So I'm going to go through these basic things here, the navigation of the menus, understanding research, the trading models, and then you can build watch lists. And then we're going to go through a quick walkthrough of the product itself and, and how to and how to get there. So I do see some comments on the on the YouTube channel. This is really a, a focused on 
really focused on the training today. I won't be doing a, any analysis on stocks or, or anything else. It's really about the training of software. Tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern time, I will be doing the typical live stream that we do and going through stocks and going through markets and all types of things like that. But yeah, so somebody has WaveTech works on top of the platform trade session. No, it is actually a freestanding platform. Uh, there is WaveTech modules that we're working on. It's been really slow. There's, I, I've, I've got a, one last thing I have to do. It's an internal issue with getting on the App Store at TradeStation. So we'll let you know when that's out there. But so let's let's just go over to the product here. And let's just go through very quickly. This is going to take me 10 minutes max. Go through the navigation and talk about what the elements are here on the screen. And one of the things that there is for everything on here, the entire world is mapped out. Now, this is a domestic platform. It does have ADRs in there. We don't have any foreign stocks. We're actually looking. We've got a fair amount of folks from Canada on on here and we're looking at potentially adding Canadian stocks. I actually contacted our vendor to see just what, what, what that's going to be about. We don't really care. It'll take us more time if we threw another 6,000 stocks in here. It would, it would cause some further run times for the servers and updating all the stocks. But this is an end-to-day platform, and what that means is as far as this platform's concerned at the moment, at this time of the day, it's still yesterday. So we get our data in about two hours from now. The servers take about two, two and a half hours to run. And we update all 16,574 symbols that are in the database. We, we bring in the, the data from today, all the open, high, low, close, and all the, all the different elements that comes in our data vendor. We crunch those numbers. The servers update. We tell you on a short-term basis, there's both short-term trades as well as intermediate term on this platform. So you, you have daily trades that can happen daily, and then you have trades that happen on a weekly basis. And the weekly basis, the only time those orders come out is on Mondays. And then during the week, you can have and will have orders that come out all the time as far as the you will have orders that come out anytime during any day of the week and depending on how, how they go. But I'll walk you through this, but it is an end of day process. And the way this works, we're going to tell you to buy or sell a symbol. And the, the result of that buy and sell, we're going to tell you today, when, when the servers update, we're going to tell you to actually go and execute the order on the next open. So we Somebody had made a comment I saw at one stage that there is, you know, that, hey, you can't buy when, when, when uh, WaveTech tells you to buy. You can't. But we already know that. So the orders that we generate, we need to have the, the data. So just like you and I sitting here right now, we look at a chart. We go, hey, we want to buy it. System's going to tell you to buy it. Then the next data point available on individual symbols and ETFs is tomorrow's opening. And not only is tomorrow's opening the next data point, it's actually, if you get the order ahead of the opening, especially New York Stock Exchange listed stuff, it gets into the opening auction pool and everybody gets the same price. So the, the price that this platform thinks you bought and sold at is actually the the opening price of the next day. So we tell you to buy or sell today, we execute the, on the opening price. So when the servers update the next day, you'll see, oh, there's the sell signal, there's the buy signal. And the entry price is going to be that price that's released by the data vendors as the opening, which is where the, the exchanges release all this data, which is that, that opening price that everybody comes in at. So uh, so that's the basis of everything that happens. So servers update, they 
on a daily basis. They issue buy and sell signals on a weekly basis. On Friday night, we update everything on Friday night. And then Monday morning is that buy. Now, what, now, now let's go to the screen here. And what we're talking about here, this is the research. This is showing you the mapping, current mapping right now for the 16,574 symbols. It says that there are 10,185 symbols that are currently long. There's 6,689 neutral. So there's 61% of the database is long. And what that means is that the probabilities for trending or appreciating prices, there's 61% of the market of everything that's in represents that 16,000 plus symbols are telling us things are going to go go higher. And, and then we break it down by sector, by group, and then individual symbol. And you'll see over on the in the main section here, this is telling us exactly what what's going on with each each one of these sectors and uh, looked like healthcare was a new buy on Monday but this is the intermediate so this is only going to update once a month or once a month once a week uh, I'm clicking over if you see where my cursor is, it says daily searches that's going to bring me to the database the daily or the short-term database now it shows us that we're 81 percent of the symbols are long 13,578. And this was up a few weeks ago, I think as we came in, in and about June 9th, we were printing somewhere around 90% long. So what we've seen since then, as we, it backed, we, after the June 9th high, we saw some rollover of the database, it got down to about 65% long, and now it's moved back up to it's moved back up to the 81.92% long. And when you're watching my YouTube channel, you're going to you're going to see that I I reference a lot of this data all the time. This is what's driving a lot of the my personal sentiment as far as what's going on with the markets is the short term database and the intermediate term database and Maybe we'll get into some analysis and how to read this here in a few minutes, but I just want to walk through all the components. So this is everything on research and you can you can drill down so you can click on basic materials and it's going to show you the subgroups of that and it's going to show you each one of the subgroups that there is on each one of these as far as the as you know, this is what's being currently held. So chemical manufacturing's been long for 59 days and what these current duration numbers mean. And this is, uh, so I'm just gonna keep this high level here. There's several videos. You can go to our portfolioexpert.com and that's expert without an E. And you can you can go to that and you can, you can actually see the training videos. I think there's one on built uh, pretty detailed on building a on, on building on building portfolios. There's one on understanding a lot of this stuff is out there. But since we have a lot of folks on online right now, I just want to go ahead and cover some of that. So the but you're going to see these numbers here, and there's a map for every symbol in our database, all 16,000. And I'm, I'm going to drill through that, then we're going to go over, we're going to talk about building portfolios, then we'll open up for questions after that. So you'll notice that it says 59 of 38. So what it tells us is normally on that particular symbol on a short-term basis, what, what there is is it normally holds for that 39 days. Well, it's it's extended. This trend has been so strong, it's extending. It doesn't mean it will exit on 38 days, but it tells you, gives you a profile of what it looks like. And we can continue. I just keep picking on this chemical manufacturing the top level. It's just random. It, as then you can break it down. And, and when you click on, let me go back, make sure you see what I did there. So on the chemical manufacturing, I'm going to back all the way back one more level here. So I'm on basic materials. I clicked on that. Then it brings chemical manufacturing. This is on the short-term database. And then I click chemical manufacturing. And it's going to show you all of the symbols 
and what the P&L is, when it bought, what the current price is, what the entry is, how many days it's been holding long. And these buttons that you see here, TC, QWR, will give you different elements. So the T button is going to tell you what the profile looks like and what the expected returns are on every symbol in the database. So everything is mapped out. So somebody's asking where, where you go to sign up. The best way to go to sign up is to go to kendallreport.com slash wavetech, and that's W-A-V-E-T-E-C-H. That's the best place. There's a video I'll, I'll describe some more of what's going there, and there's a page here where you can sign up. That's the best page. And the way that it works is that we prorate, like right now it's the 21st of the month, it's going to be like probably under $40, $38 for the rest of the month. There's no trial, so you, you pay as you go. And then at the first of next month, it'll roll over and you will get, and then you, you'll get charged at the first of the month. And you can cancel anytime. It's not a big deal. There's no, you just go into the dashboard and you should be able to cancel. We've had a couple of people not canceled and get paid. Just let us know if, you know, you don't want to go forward. You didn't cancel it right. We'll, we'll take care of it for you. You know, we're, we're, we're good guys. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to take care of you. So the uh, bottom line is uh, all of these, all these symbols here, there's a map on everything. So we're just going to, we're going to drill in. I don't, uh, and so we're going to use this TCQWR. I'm going to click on R, which takes me to the individual research on the symbol. And there's a number of elements here that are worth looking at. And the number one is the top where it says poor, fair, good, excellent. This one is fair. It's not, we have a self rating system on every symbol, not some, every symbol. And typically it's, you're going to have a much better reading if you have at least, let's say 10 or more, maybe 12 or more trades in the trade log. And I'll show you where all that's at here in a sec. But it shows you the, uh, the black button here where my cursor is. That's It exited this symbol right here up around 32 bucks. I'll show you exactly what it did. And then we did buy it back in when the trend was recognized again. It's currently uh, bought in at 24.81 on 4.27. And between 3.26 and around mid-May, uh, mid-April or around this time, around 4.27, we actually had over almost 11,000 buy signals and just about everything worked because everything was rebounding off the lows. I think we bought Apple at, I think we put up Apple here. We bought Apple on like 326 or something, 325. So we, we'll go here. Yeah, so you see Apple, if you can see where my cursor is, Apple bought on 327 at 252. It's still long. It's up. 55.66% on this trade. And so you can see where it was sold over here, bought, it sold it, sold it before the big collapse, and then and then it, it came down. And once it bottomed, it looks like it was approximately four or five days after the actual bottom came in, it purchased it. But every symbol, I'll just use this, we can go into model results and we can on the left hand side there's navigation and I click on that. This shows me the year by year returns just doing all the trades on this particular particular stock. It's interesting. I mean 61.26% in 19. Now it's up 61.3 this year. But this is where you're going to see a lot of details. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, all of the uh, all this stuff here is going to be information about the trades. There was this has done 239 trades, and so it's 100 winners, 139 losers. So it actually has more losers as winners, 
and you go, like, wait a minute, I thought this thing worked. Well, let me explain what how it does work. And this is one of the things that if you see these things out on the internet, we have a, a confirmed 90% accuracy rate. Run, <laughs> run as fast as you can, because most likely that's some hypester. If you have to be 90% right to make money, you will never be able to maintain that. And now this is 239 trades that's been generated. They're not all winners. I'm going to show you all the details here in a second. But this is available on every symbol in the database. Every symbol. Not some symbols, every symbol. So anything that is there, our database it actually starts on January 2nd, 2000, 2000, January 2nd, 1980. So we have 40 years of data in this model. We've been running this for a long time. We've been handling investment advisor accounts for over 22 years. 1998 is when we launched this product the first time. And, but everything is here. What, how many trades? What the percent win? So this is how you make money. You don't make money through percentages. You make money in the old Kenny, Kenny Rogers song, Know When to Hold Them and Fold Them. It's what your ratios are on your, your money being made versus what you lose. So here, so the average win-loss ratio here, I'm going to highlight this. It's over on the right. Average win-loss ratio is 2.4323. And what that means is for every dollar lost, you're making $2.43. So that's why you can be 41% right and make 730% on all these trades. Now this is, you know, from 1980. So these are a long term. And and what we're looking at here is our, our short term models. And we could go in and look at the weekly models. There's only gonna be two to four trades a year, typically on the intermediate models. There might be as many as six or eight. It just depends on the volatility of the stock you're looking at. The longer term, The, the longer the longer term that you go out and, and use the intermediate models, they tend to have better accuracy, especially if you want to build portfolios, you're better off using the, the weekly the weekly ones as well as you know, the weekly models more so than the short term models. The short term models in 2020 have been golden. I mean, there's just a lot. And I still think I, I still think at some stage, you know, if you watch the channel, you you know, you know, I've been talking about the 3280 level being resistance. Somebody made a comment on the channel. Is there actually any real resistance on anything right now? There is. We I think we traded 77 and rejected that price a little bit. But what I'm looking for is like a recycling of the short term database. And then that will give me, uh, that will give us an opportunity, which I will call short-term, short-term cycle, short-term trade 2.0. We'll we'll talk about that when it's time. But here's what I want to show you next is it, on the far right it says view the full trade log. And what I can do here is I can open up this window, and this says from night. From 1980, 12, 23, 1980 on Apple has every trade that was made. The, I call it the good, the bad, and the ugly. And one of the things that we talk about in utilizing this stuff, you want to watch out uh, consecutive, consecutive winners and losers. You know, you're going to get this is a short-term model. So there's, there's a lot of trades, 239 trades. So it, when you when you go to when you go more to a, an intermediate model, let me just flip this over since we're on Apple. You get much different trade stream on, on the intermediate, and you'll see something I think uh, more more amazing there if we if we go to model results here. Now you made you you only did 34 trades in 40 years, so this is what I was talking about. The 34 trades, 
the average win loss is five dollars and eighteen cents or five point one eight versus one dollar loss and your your percent win on this one is is ninety nine ninety nine percent so i I told you to run away uh, but i'm I'm not telling you that every symbol is like this. this is just a, a unique symbol this we all know that Apple's been in a trend since Steve Jobs came back in 1999. So let's, um, but anyway, that's that's the breakdown of the system. The only other thing that we have here, there's watch lists. So I'll just put my, uh, my daily list up here. So you can put stocks in here. The, the, you have to understand that by going through the software, you just go through, and the pluses mean that there's a current open position. A dollar sign, orange dollar sign, means that it's a new buy, and there's 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 things that you have to you have to understand, and it's in the uh, training videos. So let's go ahead and we're, let's go over now to the virtual portfolio manager. And hey Bob, this, yeah, interrupt um, you for a quick question. Sure. Uh, back to that Apple page where you talked about 99 percent. Yeah. Uh, maybe I misread that because I thought you had 15 winners and 19 losers there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I was trying no, to that was that. I'm 19. sorry. Yeah, that was me misquoting. That's the average gain on a trade was 99%. The actual win loss, uh, uh, the percent winners, where's it at, was 44.11. I'm sorry. That was me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I can always count on you, Ron, to keep me straight, man. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So I was. I looked at that. I'm trying to run on the screen here pretty quick. But thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. So the average win on a trade was 99, made 100 percent on a trade, and there was 34 of them. And on on the downside, the average uh, loss was 19.26. Uh, now that we're we're going to be looking at the Virtual Portfolio Manager next. This is important to understanding some of these signals. You're going to see uh, big, maybe you'll see some losses like, oh, I lost 20%. Well, when you get into a portfolio, and let's say you put 15 or 20 stocks in a portfolio, and you build what we call your own little personal mutual fund, you can decide the constituent list. There are some pre-built strategies, but you can decide your own constituent, what the symbols come in. And there is a decent training video, and I'm going to be doing more. And maybe I think there probably should be just a training session on how to maintain a strategy that both on screening, ad, uh, developing constituent list, and maintaining. That's something I, I think I should focus on. I'm actually making a note to myself on that because that's something that you need to know to be able to, to do this appropriately. So, yeah, so uh, anyway, so when you start to build a portfolio and you have tw uh, 20 stocks, and I don't think I, let me see, I do have something here built. If I go to the portfolio manager, what you're gonna see here is, I think there's one of these I've got I think this test A B. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. So this one has twenty. This is a good example. So this this is something I built, and it's pretty simple to build. I think last time we did something like this, and I think it it, it was fun to do. Is I'll, I'll just Jay. I'm going to uh, depend on you to get me some stocks. But even those of you when we get ready to build. A portfolio. If you want to throw some symbols out, we'll just build a random, totally random. We'll we'll put them in there, and we'll we'll build them on a short-term basis and an intermediate, and we'll just do one together, and then we'll just do questions and see what comes up. But this particular strategy has 26 symbols, and this is what I want to show you. When you go, when you build a portfolio, and I go to open positions over on the left, all of the the data is over here, so it's going to start to show. It's going to show me exactly. It's it's going to show me ex exactly what percentage is owned, and this is. 
this column here, it shows cash right now. I have 5.5% of my portfolio in cash. And this is also the way that you construct a portfolio is you need to almost have this separate environment. So if you're going to build a your own mutual fund, then you should actually open up a separate account, you know, and call it call it something else and build with a household environment. So you just put some money in. So I saw somebody said, what if you only have $500? You can do this with Robinhood with a fractional shares. There's no, no problem with that. You'll just have to put those orders in yourself. And this is exactly what you would do with this, is you would actually take these symbols. This would be a little, it's a little tedious, but this is a, a weekly model. There's not going to be very many changes. There's going to be incremental changes. So there's going to be times where you have orders and I'm going to show you all this stuff very quickly. And the, but what these, this column here where it says percent portfolio, as we, as we look down that column, that tells us exactly what the portfolio, and remember this is as of yesterday. So if you're going to take this portfolio and start for tomorrow, you would want to let the servers update from the market activity today. So it's going to give you the current percent balances on every symbol in here. And all you do is you match these percents based on the total amount of money in the in a portfolio that you're going to allocate to. It gets really nearly it gets nearly impossible to manage if you don't have a lot of yeah, to, if you have too many other things going on in a portfolio, you're not going to be able to segregate it out unless you're, unless they give you the ability which to segregate your account. Which I have, I, I don't know a lot of that. I have a retail fidelity account, and it doesn't look like to me that there's a lot of this kind of stuff available, and that's why we're trying to figure out how to how to get this. The best way to do it is just to open up a separate account, and you know, call it. You know, we'll call it Bob's portfolio, whatever. And so that matching is all you have to do. But this is what I want to bring up. And this is a long way to get to this answer. But when we start talking about the uh, a trade that lost, let's say lost 20%, you're not losing 20% of your money. You're using 20% of the money you had in the process, which here it would be, if, so if, let's say this this particular symbol is making money, but let's say we lost we lost 20% of that. What we would lose relative to the portfolio, we had 3.9%. We'd lose 20% of the 3.9% that we had allocated to that. So it would be 0.6 loss to the portfolio. It would that that would be a big hit. And you, one of the nice things about this product and, and the map that's in there is you can go in, I can click on, on this, this button here, just like we were in a minute ago. I'm just going to click on this R button, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the model results, and I'm going to be able to see that average, average loss. So we can see, yeah, this thing's average win. This is, I picked a wild stock here. But average gain is 164%. Average loss is 21. So that that is that's a that's a big number. But look at the ratio. The win loss ratio is 7.6, and and you can see up at the top here the the rating on this symbol is excellent. Yeah. So somebody's asking when the signal by the next day it may gap or run away from you. That can happen, but that's exactly our system knows that it ran away. It's okay to go ahead and buy that symbol. And what happens is once you do enough of these trades, and going back to the, the, the portfolio side, this, all these numbers actually normalize over time. So if you have this set of symbols here, right now we have 18 positions. When you bought them, some are going to come in lower than, than what we thought you're going to buy. Some are going to come in higher. And once you get into the flow and you, uh, let me show you the, the trade log. And uh, we've been running this process with real money over $275 billion roughly over the last 22 years. 
So this is, you know, this is not the first radio rodeo, but what this is going to tell us is exactly on this symbol, it's going to show you the price, which is that next open. And like I said, it's going to normalize. You can see these are all the buys and sells in this portfolio that, that have happened. And this goes all the way back to the first day. I think I built it uh, back, test it back to 2015. So all of that, some better, some worse is all in there. In 2020, that used to, it, it may be, there could be some variances, but we're still having good performance. We're running portfolios right now. Everything's happening. So, you know, everything is there. And so what you're seeing on the screen, I say a question, does it tell you, this tells you when to sell, when it says sold, you'll get it, you'll get an exit signal. It would have told you on the day before the 18th, this is weekly, so whatever that Friday, the 15th, it would have told you FDP to sell that symbol. And this is the results that are going on in the model itself. So what we're, you know, a lot of folks are used to seeing model trackers, but this is a, a modeling process. So all the transparency is, is there. So we can go and we can go to performance. We can see, we can compare this to the S&P 500. The black line in the bottom is the S&P 500 going back to 2015. We can we can do, we can model this. We can see if it's, it's a it's like playing in a sandbox, folks. You've got the ability which to go in and test this stuff. You can back test. You can change symbols. There's all of this stuff is in the training videos. But I want you to understand the basic concepts here of what can be done, and. And then down below, it's going to show you rolling return. So it shows you what if I started at some point and only did it for 12 months? What are my returns? So it tells me my best, my worst, and my average. And it tells you, it helps you to build expectations. I used to run a commodity trading advisors, advisor, CTA, and ran a lot of money back in the, in the 80s and early 90s. And we always use this presentation for investors when they came in. We would build two expectations. One, what if you only gave us a year to work with you? And then what what would happen if we what would what would it look like if you gave us two years? And you'll see it in in this particular strategy we built, the two year performance of best worst, but the average is is this a huge portfolio? I don't remember what we built this from, but but it's going to show everything. So let's say you built something that was absolutely terrible. Well, that's good to know. You need to find better constituents. You need to make sure that the symbols that you're u utilizing in the process itself have good ratings. And that's why going back, if you watch this for the last 20 minutes or so, you'll know that what, I, what I'm talking about is that you want to make sure you have these quality stocks. It works well on the system. It, you already know it trades well because you go back into research and you look at the ER ratios, the performance, the risk that it's presenting, and then you take those symbols and you put them into a constituent list and build a portfolio. So that's what, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to, together, we're going to build a portfolio and it's just going to be random. So it, I know there's a little bit of a, a delay. Well, can I ask one question? Sure. Uh, this is Michael. So, so my question is the following. Uh, like I was practicing with the, the portfolio. And, um, like, for example, what would you do if some uh, symbols, uh, they show a negative net profit uh, in the past period, uh, but positive ER? Uh, taking into account with like the common saying that the past performance doesn't reflect the future, uh, would you say that this is still good options uh, to consider since the ER is good? Uh, yeah, so here's that's a good question. And what what you want to look at, let's say let's say the reason why the performance was bad, I suspect the stock wasn't doing very well, right? 
for the most part, or it was very noisy, very choppy, something like that. So this is where you start to combine a combination of fundamental, maybe a fundamental screen, looking at stocks and going, I like this stock because I think this is going to be the next rotation in a market like we're in right now. This is going to be the next market that we're going to be able to do. And uh, I just want, when I'm answering this question, folks, give me some symbols to build a portfolio with. So start putting those in the timeline, YouTube and on, on Zoom. And I'll rely on Jay to get me the, the Zoom stuff. Anyway, the, yeah, so it, a symbol that doesn't perform well, hasn't performed well for the last couple of years, but overall has a good rating, you want to look at that stream. You want to look at all the trades in there, there's all the transparency, and just see how overall how it's reacted. When And a lot of these symbols that, that go sour sometimes get into a non-trending mode. Maybe they're, they're, they've had corporate issues. That's why it's important to understand when you're doing individual stocks, it's not just about looking at the technicals, it's also understanding a little bit about the type of companies that you're choosing to put in there. And, you know, that they have some sort of characteristic even there, you know, like let's let's take a Tesla for, for instance. And, you know, a Tesla really hasn't made any money, but neither did Amazon for a long time, right? And they were still good stocks. So fundamentally, you had to have some other reason fundamentally maybe to own those stocks. So long answer, but if you have a stock that you go in, you really like the stock, you research it, you like it, you look at it and go, it's negative. Well, the fact that it's been negative doesn't mean it can't trade, uh, trade well. So anyway. All right, so that, Michael, did that answer your question well? I, I, I still don't understand your, like, uh, personal view. Like, what, what, what you would factor more, the ER or the negative net profit in the previous period uh, of five years, like, on, on the long term? Like, what, what you, uh, in terms of uh, the evaluation, uh, what would you pay more attention to, to the ER, if I understood you correctly, rather than to net profit in the previous period? Actually, to the company, <laughs> neither. So, but for, but for example, if I believe in the company, uh, but um, it's uh, like, would, would, wouldn't that be one of the reasons to, even though I believe in the company, wouldn't be uh, based on the technicals? Uh, this one of the reasons to exclude it from the portfolio of when it stocks, for example, and look for something which consistently uh, showed uh, strong ER with positive net perform and net uh, net profit. Yeah, that, and and that that can be a way to do it. I'll give you an example back in history, in 2002, when China and India decided to buy every piece of steel on the planet. If you looked at the steel stocks and the industrial stocks prior, like 1998, that's how every one of those stocks, they were terrible. But if you thought there was something new going on, I can tell you that I built a steel portfolio. It did like 140% one year. And it was based on the analysis that there was there these stocks were coming into favor. It was similar things I've seen in the mining industry back in the, uh, got to go way back, but when you get these industries and things that are out of favor, if you see a rotation worldwide, we saw that rotation. So all of those stocks, the ERs, every one of them were terrible, okay? But this is what I know about the system, and, and I think I'm going to answer your question. What I know about the system is it's not going to miss a new trend if it happens in spite of you could have a terrible er ratio but if that symbol is going to if that's going to rotate in and it's going to locate those it, it it's going to rotate into those symbols if they start the trend this this these models are very good at picking up trends and on an intermediate and short term basis so i'm not sure i i can get exactly to, I, I know what you're saying, and I would say if you find 
This is one of the other things. I, if I, I probably, I'm thinking of a couple of people that that have used our system for a long time, that uh, have are used to looking at these symbols and how to rotate things in. The unfortunate part of uh, many of my customers, they're regulated and they can't come on and talk. I'm trying to figure out a way where they can come on anonymously and tell about how how they've used it. I've got some some long term people that have done done this stuff and and these type of considerations. Yeah, so I, I, I see this question a lot. And the um, just so you know, the market grid is not on this platform. I'm actually w working with somebody as we speak to build a platform to deliver that stuff. So we're we're ways off, but not terribly off. I don't think it's going to take real long. Uh, from what I what I'm what I'm seeing anyway, so so anyway, um, I, I did I did I come close, Michael? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you actually? I think yeah, one symbol which is struggle. I'm struggling with. Can you look at it and uh, tell me uh, if I'm right in my opinion on it? What, what's the symbol? And I'll, I'm going to build a portfolio and I'll go back to it right after that. In in. I N F Y. Okay. All right. I wrote it down. Well, I'm going to build a quick portfolio so everybody can see that. Then we'll go. Thank we'll you. go to that. Thank okay. You. So I'm going to call this test. Uh, what is the date today? Seven. It's the twenty-first. Twenty-first. How'd that happen? Okay. Time's flying by. <laughs> okay. So. We're calling this test 721, and we're going to, so this is what happens with this, folks. It's going to build a back test, and you want to build a back test because you want to get an idea how these symbols, how these symbols work, and, and uh, so I'm going to leave, not going to go through a lot of description. There's a video on the website. It's under support, and there's WaveTech, and there's a it's actually a long one. It's like 35 minutes is the longest video up there, but it walks you through a lot of these elements and thoughts, even how to maintain the strategy once you build one. So we're just going to keep it going. We're going to, I think I'm going to put a half a million dollars in this account. We'll, we'll, we'll build in. So you can decide how, how much money's going in there. Um, So we'll, we'll put a half a million. You see over on the right-hand side, it starts to fill in. Minimum transaction, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to change this, but I'm not going to explain why. Uh, and this is, an, an, this is a really important step here. And we've been running everybody to high activity, low liquidity. And what that means is this particular modeling process, when we put a bunch of symbols in here, we want to tell it to use the capital every dime that we have. We want to we want to trade it. We don't want to have any cash slush fund. If you want to be more conservative, you drop it to a modern activity, and that will target about 20% in cash. But we're just we're just going to put it out there and 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 do that. So here we go. So uh, transaction fees. I'm going to assume that your place where you're doing business is not not doing anything so jay i'm going to grab some stuff off of off of the youtube site and okay and uh i the zoom ones i placed in skype that won't do or, me any good on oh you can't you can't no, okay no, just just you're going to call them out to me in a minute uh, oh okay no problem right, okay so um yeah i'm just there's just trying to see yeah we'll put We'll put a bunch of these symbols in. And I'm not sure if MFA financial, if that's MFA, I don't know that symbol. I wish I was Jim Cramer. No, I don't. <laughs> Just joking. All right. So, all right, Jay, give me, give me some symbols you got. There's not a lot on the, I don't know, is tree, is that dollar tree? Is that the symbol? Do you know? It might be. I think tree is Dollar Tree. I have NFY, okay. AMGN. I don't know what that is. 
Yeah, I'm not sure. You had JKS. Okay. VST. Okay. APHA. Got it. Uh, TECK. TVTY. Blue. B L U E. C P R T. Auto. Uh, A A U T O. Um, and then um, I think on that one you did two A's for auto. Uh, uh, w N S is the next one. That's what. That's actually what you said. A A T O. <laughs> I'm so, did I say oh, this is my, my slip you of the tongue? <laughs> I'm following instructions. <laughs> exactly. So it wasn't me. I do apologize. Uh, you got a WNS, ATTL, okay. and then glue, GLUU. You sure? On that one, I'm totally <laughs> sure because I actually use no, that. I'm I good. use that one. So, I'm, I'm <laughs> so I know time. that one good. And that's sniffing glue. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we get the grout. Um, do you need some more? That's what I've No, down that's, that's enough. So I'm going to highlight these and I'm going to build these two ways, folks. This is just an example. Just to, what I, what I like, what I like about doing this stuff is it's random. I didn't pick it. So you guys don't think I'm cooking the books on you. Okay. <laughs> that's not the, the goal is just to put some random, random symbols in here. I even put silver in there. Uh, I see a couple more coming up now that I said that we'll put a couple more. And, and typically, you want to have about 15. I know Jay builds a lot of stuff with 10. You can do them with 10. But, you, you know, you want to have 15, maybe as many as as 20 in a, in a strategy. And and I did see someone, yeah, you could you can definitely do these. Like I said, Robin Hood, fractional shares. I know interactive brokers, I believe, have fractional shares now. Yeah, I got to put Tesla in there, right? Can't forget Tesla. So we're just going to go with this list. I'm going to highlight these. We're going to build this just so you can see how easy it is from here. So all we have to do is once we get these symbols in, we hit the next button. And we're let me explain. I'm putting these in the top box, which is optimizing for the, the weekly modeling. And what that does is it actually picks the best model for that symbol. So in our database, when you're looking at, if you've been on the stream for a while, in the database, what we have is we look at the total best total net profit by symbol, and then we map in the database what's best. So if you choose daily, you put it in research, or in this case, we put it in this box, it's going to find the best models on an intermediate, which is approximately a 200, 250 day hold. It'll hold longer if the thing trends, but that's that's typical it. So all we have to do once we get in that top box is we hit next and there's missing data on ATTL. So actually there's a couple. I must have did something wrong here, NFY. No, I think it's maybe just some old symbols and Maybe there's some newer symbols or newer companies using those symbols. We just haven't added them yet. Or okay. We didn't, we didn't know of so, them. So which symbols were those? I got to go back. So we need to pull those out. So ATTL. Take that guy up. Yeah. So think, was NFY the other one? Was that I the think other? It was. Yeah. Lower box. Yeah. Oh yeah, there he is. All right, so now we're going to go next, and this is what we want to see. We want to see all magical-looking green buttons, which means there's live data. It's ready to go. If you have something with red like we just saw, you just have to take them out, and you can notify us by sending a feedback, and we'll, we'll review the symbol to see if it's a good symbol to put in the database. There is a review process, so not everything. If you give us a stock that's... 12 cents a penny stock we're not going to it's probably not going to make the cut so the so the once we see all the green buttons we want to go to next these are all management fee cycles so 
If you're a money manager and watching this, then you can put in your fees. If you're not, you just leave this all blank. And I click the next button. And I mentioned when we started building this that this is a demand on capital model. And so we told it to use all the money the best it can all the time. And so when it, it calculated what it what it just did, I'm going to go back to the previous step. It's already there. But when I'm on this step and I hit next, it goes in and it calculates what the demand on capital on every given day back to 2015. And it looks to determine how to allocate that money out over time to keep it as fully invested when these symbols are long. And so once you get there, we got 11.43. So this is called the initial factor is making an initial bet on that symbol at 11. There's some other dynamics that happen. We go to next and it says, hey, you're finished. You're ready to go. And we're going to hit allocate finish. And there's a little button up at the top that says hit OK. It'll bring you back to the screen. And now you'll see test 721 is the one that we're Seven two one is our portfolio. It shows allocation queue, and you have to refresh this page. So up on the left hand side where it says virtual portfolio manager, you click portfolio access, and it's still in queue. So what happens is we queued this up in the server, and it's waiting to be run. And our servers go and look and say, hey, is anybody trying to run a portfolio? And we've got a lot of users on the platform. So anybody that builds a portfolio. It'll grab them. It actually can run them pretty. Once it gets them, it doesn't take long to run. But it looks every minute for another queue. And if there is a lot of folks, it could take a couple minutes. But typically, it's within a minute. So when I re refresh here, it should be run. OK, it is. So it's run through. So this is our test 721. So everything that we build has already been built now. Well, wow, there's some rocket ship stocks on this one. Uh, look at this. Look at this equity curve. So it didn't do much for multiple years here. It was down 20% in 18 on this model. And then we, we went 2019. So you have one bad year, 2018. got whacked in October of 2018. Well, I know we discussed it before, but there is no way to see what uh, was the, the problem, like uh, to drill in to this number and understand what caused this minus, what stocks actually caused this. Yeah, um, yeah, there there is not. Uh, other than the fact, <sighs> yeah, there's no way to. You can go back in a trade profile uh, in a trade log. And but you'd have to figure that out. Yeah, you have to, to, to cut it into Excel and analyze there. What was the, the pro, what was the stocks which caused most of the mining? Yeah, you could probably go back to 18 here and you can see everything right here that was sold. Um, highlight them. Those are probably all of the bad guys right there. Mm -hmm. But that's 4 to 18. Let's look further down. Because that was fourth quarter, October, right? Amgen, Tech. Yeah. Long again. This goes to that question I had earlier where it would it would help just to have a starting balance, ending balance for each month that you could pull up. <laughs> and, oh, oh and it's there. It's all there. That's there. Yeah, That's no, I, I know it's available because you had rolling... Uh, uh, months and things like that that you talked about in yeah. the earlier session. Yeah, so you just bring up the open the uh, um, let's see here, you bring up the history CSV file and everything's there. Every day value, month end and if you yeah, so let me bring that over on screen for you. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's all there. Uh, so this is how much cash you had on any given day. So you can see end of month, actually, if you're a, a little bit, uh, if you understand, you could do rolling returns right here. All the data is there. 
Yeah, so it's right there on the CSV file. Yeah, so er everything everything is there. And by date, so you can go all the way back to 15. And so you can see the end of the month. So you could put a, a date range and do the calculation for, for the month to month returns. There is also the trade log CSV. I'm, I'm just trying to thank Michael if there's an answer to to your your question that we were talking, you know, trying to figure out who the bad guys were in that in that mode. I don't know if there's if there's a way to figure that out. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at that. We have we have a guy that worked with me for a long time and runs a lot of money with this platform and I will I I will have him take a look. There might be a way because we're actually giving the price that the the prices, all this stuff. There might be a way to pull that data out of here. I, I will look into that because that would be nice if nothing else to have like a spreadsheet where you can dump this in and get those numbers and ROM ask for something before. Believe it or not, we had it in a prototype where it gives you what was held at the end of the month. So this this would actually show you that list, ROM, as well. It would be a way to pull that. That data is right here. It's just not being yeah, displayed. No, I, I knew you had it because it, you, you use it elsewhere. Like I think, as I yeah. mentioned, yeah. they have the rolling, uh, you know, accumulated. Uh, well, I don't know what the, the right uh, page was, but yeah, you could so, tell how much you're making monthly. So all of these CSV files bring into in there, and that data would can be manipulated there and probably brought that. But it'd be kind of cool, actually, to build. I'm going to I'm going to talk to Mitch about this, see if he could uh, build. You might have to have access to be able to do it. But we might be able to take this list and dump it into a spreadsheet and it would sort it and do those things that we're talking about very simply. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to challenge him on that and see if see if we can get that done. Because that would be kind of cool. Then they'll just we'll put a download on Portfolio Expert under somewhere. We'll put it, you know, resources or something. You download it. Then all you have to do is copy, cop, take the CSV and load it into that spreadsheet. And that would calculate those things. So I think I can. I I know nothing's going to show up on this screen because we're going to uh, ultimately the plan. Uh, I'm working on completely rebuilding the platform. So that that. But it, all the data is there. You're absolutely right. And all these CSV files are the... Are, uh, my, in my opinion, Bob, and I wanted to tell, tell you that for a while because you keep bringing it up. I think that um, the, the way the system works is just great. And uh, it's not the... I think it's more important right now to concentrate rather than rebuilding it, but just adding some additional reports. Because as you say, all the information is there and it's much yeah. easier. If yeah. It wasn't there, it was another issue. But since all the information is there, I think at this stage it's more important to work uh, on uh, generating additional reports. And yeah, so task than rebuilding the system. Yeah, the problem with this, this technology is so old, you can't buy parts for it anymore. <laughs> so there's some of this stuff we could generate, but uh, I think the spreadsheet might be the best. Uh, like I said, um, I, yeah, there's there's other things uh, going on in the background right now, but I, I understand what you're saying, but I, I just know the the uh, limitations on this platform. This The technology on this platform, including the charts, the charts are from 2000 and all this other stuff is um, um, yeah, you know it's yeah, it's just old stuff. And it's pretty tough, pretty tough to add some things to. But the, I'll, I'll look, I'll look at some of this stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I just know development on this platform is a waste of time. Uh, but maybe fixing the spreadsheet, getting some of this information out, where it's just a click of a button, I might be able to actually change the CSV output to what I want it. So there might be some things I can do there that would would get it into Excel and that's going to be, that's going to be potentially the fix there. So, um, but anyway, so going back to the portfolio that we built, everything, once we build something like this is this is 
every report is generated. So we we're looking at performance before the rolling returns, all of these things. It's going to show you negative, positive returns on this strategy that we built. It's going to show you year to date, 12 month trail. We can drop it down and uh, we can run it up against the S&P 500 and they're pretty good for a random list. And a lot of times I will, you know, when I do things like that, we'll, we'll, we'll just build a, you know, I tell folks, give me your worst and best idea you have, right? And th those are those are okay as well, you know, just to kind of show that the system is able to manage some some ideas that just didn't work. And, you know, that that that's important, I think, to understand how it's going to walk through time. The back test is good. It's not really hindsight, just so you, it can be. You can actually build models that look really good in hindsight. But the the models themselves, nothing is hindsight. This is the same trades if we were setting it was 2008. The trades that you see in 2008 are the same trades that we would if it, that we put out in 08. There's no none of the modeling in this system has been changed at all. Period. Since I think the last updates was 1998. So these models are operating out of sample. And when you're running quantitative models, there's two things that you have to be aware of. Let's say. Let's say right now we have some great ideas and we're going to go into trade station. And we're going to build a new modeling process and we go back and back test it. And we use it with the data that we know from today and we're looking in the rear view mirror and it does amazing. It's like, wow, this is awesome. That's what's called in sample, meaning that every everything we built, it had the benefit of looking backwards and not going forward. So out of sample is when you look forward. So these these models have been out of sample for 22 years plus, actually. Uh, Jay had, I don't know, we'll call it misfortune, or he's he's been working for me off and on since 1996. So, and he was, the original company was Market Mind. I actually, funny, I have on my desk, I have the old Market Mind manual, and it was the same models that we built then. Now, we cleaned up some stuff when we brought it into our old platform. We sold them in TradeStation and Supercharts. That's really dating us. Back in Omega Research days. And th those are... So the models have been tested over time. The models are walking out of... Uh, out of sample meaning they haven't seen any of the data that we're presenting to it ever before. We didn't build it and going back. And, and so that's what, that's how you, you actually validate a model is you want to build it and then you walk it forward. So what we did when we originally built them, a couple things was we back in, in 1996, we did data, we grabbed data, from way back, like 15 years, we built the we built the models on data previous from four years behind us back, and then we took that data sampling and those models, and then applied them to the four years that it didn't see. So there's a way to walk forward this type of process, and there's a book by a guy named Pardo, that's a really good book. Matter of fact. In 96, we used that book, uh, Robert Pardo, I think it's Building Systems. We used his walk forward methodology and his, his validation tree that he put together. We used those to validate when we were building the original models way back when as far as walk forward models, in sample, out of sample modeling, that type of stuff. So... We've had this thing around so long; it's out of out of sample. So let's just uh, let's just go to questions. Hey, uh, um, hey, Bob. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. I have a couple uh, specific questions. Um, how do we optimize this buy signals? Like you know, I know you talked about this data, but like for the retail traders who, who doesn't have like you know, who doesn't we cannot buy like hundred plus. Um, uh, tickers, 
let's say if I want to have, you know, 10 to 15 stocks in my portfolio, how can I optimize that buy signal? Is there is a way we can filter it down from the effectiveness ratings or like, you know, from the yeah, of yeah, combining no. couple of rules? Yeah, that's actually an excellent question. So a couple of things you can do with that is what you can do is is get that constituent list. You kind of look at the, the money you're, you're managing. Like I said, if you have access to fractional shares, that will help you a lot. But let's just say you, you've got, you don't, and you want to look at it. So what you'd want to actually go through, you, you actually just want to go through that set of symbols, research them, look at ERs, look at all the, the trades. And one of the things that we talk a lot about over the years is actually even look at on the charts and it shows you where the buy and sell uh, the the buy and sell uh, points are on the chart and so you look at it so do I like these trade locations I don't you know that you have to ask yourself if you you know if if you like those you know it's comfortable can I buy here and sell there does that make sense uh, I, I'm digging up an old article that I've talked a lot about in the past is it's it's called you know buy low sell high right that, that's that's the joke but you want to try to find symbols that are at at least bottoming patterns or consolidation patterns that are buying we uh, Jay do you remember that symbol that came out the other day that somebody did exactly what I told them not to do last time. That was team, T-E-A-M. Oh, it was team, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so let, this is an example of what not to do. <laughs> so one of the things, like when, you, when, when you're looking at these, these symbols, is right here, for whatever reason, this thing got triggered into a buy signal. And I went through this. You don't want to use those signals. There's no advantage. A, a stock that went from $20 to $200, and now it's telling you to buy, you don't buy this. This, this You don't buy 52-week highs. You want to buy down in these bases where, where it makes more sense. This is this particular stock is, has been a, been a harder stock to trade. If we put this on portfolio expert and put it on a monthly model it probably still it probably still owns it going back to whenever in the beginning but you don't want to buy high and hope i call it the jim kramer trade buy high sell higher that's not a good idea so definitely to answer your question as you want to find symbols that are you know basing or they're in a consolidation and it makes sense you can see that the uh, configuration of all of these, uh, the PPMs look look like it's in a, a bottoming pattern and all that kind of stuff. Hey, Bob, this is Ram. But just to follow so, up on that point you just made on this particular graph, yeah, you, know, you could take the make the argument that all the buy signals are at almost at peaks at that point <laughs> if uh, you don't have the future available. Yeah, say that again so I understand. No, no, the the green arrows yeah. are all at the highs at that point. If yeah. I just take, you know, if I hide the graph to the right of it. Yeah, the the first uh, first two were good. This one's a tough buy. This is a new high. Yeah, I, I'd have a hard time. And and none of those trades really worked, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that's the point, actually. Yeah. So when when you're seeing, you know, the only, you know, there was some money made if we went over and looked at the the actual model results and brought up. You'll see this last, but when you see it printing at the high bar, there's one thing, yeah, it's pretty tough, pretty tough. So let's bring this up. Because for the effective, uh, the effectiveness rating is still showing the excellent. So, um, so how how do you read it? Like, I mean, uh, if you if you want to just filter it out, and let's say if you have in a hundred buy signal, you have you want to buy, let's say, ten of them. How? What is the best way to like now filter it down? Um, because like effectiveness rating is or like close to excellent. You have a new buy, and yeah. then but the you know the graph is pretty like at the all-time high. 
do you wait for maybe like five, ten percent pullback and then pull the trigger, or uh, do you accumulate on the different positions? Yeah, and I think most of those times yeah. I would just not. I would just find another symbol uh, that if it's at an all-time high to pull back five, you know. Unless this this is the the caveat that I, this is the caveat that I've always talked about, and it is. Do you know what do you know about this stock, this symbol you're buying? Is it is it random? Sorry about that. Yeah, totally random based on the model. You know, yeah. I, I did not even know half of the you know ticker like for example the CSIQ um, and FSLR. Uh, I know they're related to you know um, solar, but I did not know about them. For example, another example was auto, which I think you recommended. Uh, last week which worked out really well yeah. Uh, but yeah purely based on like you know ticker um, uh, from this model yeah um, yeah th th I guess that's the question a lot of folks have had the way I go about building a portfolio is uh, a bit different I would go through let's say I'm brand new I, you're sitting here and I want to figure out how to build this portfolio what I'm going to do is go through those 100 stocks and I'm going to make some kind of hierarchy decision based on where they are in their cycle. Uh, I think I, I talked about that a while back. I'm going to bring a screen up on here in just a second to, to talk to embrace this concept here. So I will. Let me bring it should it's on the screen now so there's, these are the things that you're actually talking about what you know how how do i do this so there's the er ratio so let's say you have a good er now i need to look at the duration and maybe a short duration but in this case we're also going to look bring in the picking the right constituents so i want to buy something that's at or near a 52 week high and i would say probably not it could be, although it could be a Tesla, it could be a stock that you know something about, like, hey, I want to own this. I'm willing to take the risk with this stock and let it see where it gets me in and out. Even that symbol we're looking at team, even though some of those 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 symbols were not, uh, some of those trades were at higher levels, as Ron was pointing out, it still there were still some decent trades there so there is a way to way to do that so when you look at this time scale we just want to make sure that we're trying to get into them reasonably early when from the point where the signal came we want to look at the position of the trade itself is if it's at a 52 week high but 16,000 symbols picked from there's probably something better or may you know or maybe it's just you know, not not a good time to go into that. So I'm going to go back to this other screen here, and this this list here is showing those trades. There was even though it was at a high level, one trade made 45 percent, one made 13, one made six. The last two weren't very much, and the and the, this last one lost 9.3 percent. So um, so you you that even though. They were at higher levels. Let me let me let me close this so we can see this chart here behind here. If I go back over here, these trades, what we're talking about, and this is to I think hope hoping to bring in contact. So even though this trade here came at at or near a high, it wasn't at a 52-week high, but this one was. This last one was. So that was only a six percent gain. I think this is 12, and this was a bigger gain this one here. So I, I would be hesitant to do that all time new high trade, unless there was something that was driving me that these guys came up with the magic vaccine or something, maybe, maybe it'll work. But it's a bet on that. So you want to make sure that you have a reasonable amount of, of context in the decisions you make. So back real quick, I would still want to try to unpack what you're talking about. If I have 100 symbols, I want to have 20 symbols in the portfolio. I'm just going to look at them and start chopping them down based on some criteria that you're comfortable with. Like I want an ER ratio of this. I want to maybe I, we had 
head customer, he's got a strategy called 250 plus. So if it's not an ER ratio of at least 250 plus, it doesn't make the cut. And he goes, where's the position? How long has it been long? All those kind of things. Those are the things that. Yeah, so like I know it's not in the in the system right now, but is there a way that you know um, that you can introduce to like some kind of filter where you know we can set up the settings of uh, 200 uh, plus ER rating and like you know buy uh, you know the like uh, sector with the group and the symbol, um, something like that um, yeah. to optimize you know buy a little more. The second thing is how if let's say if we we're buying it at like higher level. Is there any like stop loss protection that you recommend based on eight percent of stop loss and this kind of like you know, higher buy signals um, for the uh, capital? Um, just a thought. Um, is something like you know because if it's still if it's still a buy and you know the position is let's say down fifteen percent now you know it's, it's going to be it will take significant time to like even break even. Uh, so is it better to cut loss in percentage um, or do you just recommend until there's an exit from the model? Yeah, so um, you're breaking up, but I think I was able to get most of that. And yeah, so number one, using stop losses is an overrided system because you're going to you're going to get knocked out of some of these trades before they actually work sometimes. It depends on what kind of methodology you use. And so the entries and exits if let's say we just built this portfolio and we like the performance of the portfolio to be able to to walk forward that strategy you need to be able to do all the trades in the selection process so selection process is number one and then number two there's a maintenance strategy which i talk about in the video on the support it's 35 minutes you probably can skip through but one of the things that you do is quarterly every six months you actually update your constituent list you actually want these symbols to stay in the models and if we if, if you get a trade you want to ride that trade through whatever whatever it is and typically when you look at at like even on this model results on on this team you can see you've got a profile of if i go to the trade profile here it's going to show what the uh, the minimum was 82 days that this has been long the maximum was 430 431 and the mean was 208 so you have kind of an, a concept an idea and when you're building portfolio especially on an intermediate basis you're going to want to let these rotate because sometimes the symbol will go up it'll go into a, a broad consolidation pattern and then it will start to um, emerge back out and one of the things we do have, there is a query tool, there is a, this report builder, you can, you can, this thing's kind of quirky, but, but like here, I've got it set for a 250 plus ratio. And so you can, you can actually put the current duration, it gets kind of, it's down to a number thing. On our other product, it's much. It we have a lot of that stuff you're talking about. It does do those things, but you can you can actually say I only want symbols that have this hundred to two hundred uh, days. And we'll leave that. I don't. I, this thing's kind of quirky. You just have to play with it to get some symbols. Like you'll see, I did this test strategy. I'm going to name this uh, test three. And then I, I'm going to submit it, see if we get anything. Yeah, okay. So this is, so I can sit there and I can go through the database. It's going to give me uh, what trading models are on there. It's going to tell me what they are, what type of ER ratio, average win. And it shows me the, the symbols here that how long they've been on. So I told it, I only want trades, I think I said, that were 30 days or less. And so that's all, everything it shows. You see some of these are 20, some are 15, and so forth. Yeah, I think it was 30. That was the threshold. And and so there's three pages of these. And, I, yeah, if we go back to the watch list, there is a way if I if I go into your – did I not? Let 
Let me go to the report builder. Hang on. I went to watch list. If I go to report builder, I thought, uh oh, I, I didn't save it. So, no, it's here. It's here. So I can go up here, test three. I can actually go and download that into a CSV file so I can bring that up so I can I can dig into those a little bit more and sort. And then ultimately what you can do is let's say let's say you did a, a screen like this and you found symbols that you want. Then you can just eliminate, you know, delete them out and you get your constituent list. You get 20, 20 symbols and you just copy them and then you can build a portfolio and test it and do those type of things. So the, these CSVs on this product are going to help. Being able to do a report is going to help. You can also, on this report here, I'm going to go back and on this test three, I can also tell it what metrics I want, I want to see in this by clicking these boxes. So I can see last entry date and average long. Anyway, I can, I can decide uh, what I, what I, what I see here. So when I hit submit again, it's going to, it's going to build that back and it's going to have some of those other elements. You might have to, you can scroll over and see more of those elements. So there is, this is, in this case, give us men, average long, max days held. So you can get more detail out of that screen. But this is a way to find these type of ideas. And, well, the, you know, so I'm not sure um, I answered your question exactly. Um, thank you, and I appreciate it. Um, and I have been using it for the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, I have actually made, uh, I think, about 70 buys from this uh, model, and all of them have been positive. A couple of them have been uh, really good um, home runs. Uh, but, like, I just wanted to see uh, there's so much data and there's so, many, so much, like, you know, um, a content on it. I just wanted to see if there's a way to optimize it further so we can, like, kind of, um, kind of you know, narrow focus it and kind of really have a later guided um uh, signals. Yeah, yeah. But uh, CS yeah. we really haven't. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the things that, and you know, originally when we offered this product out, we just did the research only view, and then we thought, wait a minute, let's go ahead and put the portfolio manager out there and just see, if we can really start to show folks how to build strategies and have multiple symbols and. I, I think I'm going to I'm going to try to grab a tab here. I'm going to pull it over to the other screen. And there's some there's some interesting views we, we don't have on uh, available, but it, I can I, I'm going to I'm going to try to bring something up to to be able to illustrate. some of this, some of the concepts, because one of the things that that's really important is when you start to build, when you go to portfolios versus just trading individual stocks in a random and you start allocating capital out to a basket of stocks. So this is basket trading, building a mutual fund, building your own ETF. We actually have strategies that we have worked with a third party data firm that gets all of the constituents out of the ETFs and we've rebuilt the ETFs and we made them much better. And that's one of the things that, uh, that's one of Jay's projects that, that he does as we're working on putting in a whole, a whole suite of basically re-engineered ETFs that are popular out there. And, and where we take maybe the top 20 or 50 constituents and we, we build out and we, we completely re-engineer it, re it. And then if you have, a, and the ETFs, most of them have 25, 50 BIPs and built in and costs. You can eliminate the cost and you can build these things. They trade better. They have the ability to go to cash. They manage your risk better. And ultimately what you end up with is a, mut, is a, that ba, a, a dynamic basket of stocks versus the static ba, basket of stocks that the ETF manager is delivering. For the most part, e ETFs are junk. If they're just, um, you know, not that these guys that run them don't spend a lot of time, but they just do nothing. Most of them are index-based. 
some of them are, are trying to deliver some dynamic management, but in the end it doesn't, they, they don't do very, don't do a very good job at managing risk. And you, because two things happen is you have a mandate, which is called a prospectus, especially under mutual funds, same thing on ETF. So there's only certain things they can do and they have to, they can't hold more than X amount of cash. I call it investing through mandate. And this is what we're talking about here is being able to build these very dynamic baskets of stocks that if the, if the world rolled over like it did in this year, that it just goes to cash. Just get out. You know, there's nothing wrong with being nothing wrong with being in cash, especially if you have a sell discipline and a buy discipline. And then you can you can also do things like mixing short term ideas and rotation with long term we have we have a, a lot of stuff that that we have that you can you can do like that, which is really powerful. Thank you, Bob. And one last question: Any timeline on uh, when you will have the grids on this model? Uh, the grids been really helpful for the future trading. Yeah. I have been following your YouTube yeah. channel. Uh, they've been working like a charm. And thank you again for like you know creating them every night especially wake up in the middle of the night to watch them. So thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. You're like the, the, uh, a multiple people I've heard that are waking up to get those. Yeah, we're, we're working on on, uh, on a delivery process to get those out there because that's it's a manual process. So I put the features out on Twitter, as you know, if you're getting those. And then I, I somebody was asking me, why don't I put the SPX numbers on Twitter? I guess I could. I guess my goal is for you guys to get to my channel, at least subscribe so you can get to that stuff. And it, so I I have, that's why I put it on the channel. I'm like, hey, you guys are, I've got my Twitter accounts building up pretty good lately. So if, you know, if you're watching there, if you're getting these numbers, come on over. And then we're working on a couple things to be able to deliver them on maybe, you know, top 10, top 20 popular trading stocks and some other indices and stuff like that. So we're, we're researching stuff. And at some stage, I'll go out to the community and say, what would you guys like to see on, you know, what would you like to see on the grid that are, that would be useful, you know, for you, for you to have, so. Now, Dave, I'm missing, thank you, um, you know, for future trading, it's really well. Yeah, so uh, you're you're coming. Uh, you're breaking up pretty bad there. So, Bob, um, I I have one tough question for you. Uh, can you go back to the portfolio which which we built today, the tech yeah. portfolio? Sure. And um, show. Uh, I understand that the, the it's quite complicated, probably. But uh, can you show like an express way? Uh, to analyze it and um, exclude some of the stocks which are not uh, performing well, uh, because I tried to do it several times over the past couple of weeks, and um, I came up with different type of analysis which I do. So I yeah. want to understand like how you do it in, in express terms yeah. without deep research. Hey Jay, do you want to answer that? Because you're. The uh, <laughs> I was trying to answer a few questions. I, I could, could, is that, was that Mikhail? Can he yeah, repeat Michael, that? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was yes. trying to answer a bunch of questions. No, what he was once. talking about is how, how to, how to review a portfolio. I can put it on screen. I can be your hands for you. But he was talking about, like, I was going to talk about going to like symbol returns and uh, Michael, why don't you say it again? And Jay wasn't paying attention. So the question yeah. is, yeah, that we're looking at this table and I was looking at this table. I was do, do, practicing different techniques on uh, which stocks are the worst performers and uh, which stocks should be excluded. I mean, the obvious uh, is the total net profit one. Right. Uh, look at. Right. I also look at percentage profitable and the ER, like the, the main indicators which are here. Uh, but uh, what I'm interested in, which indicators you give more weight and which indicators you give less weight. Pretty much returning to the, my first, the, the question which I asked before as well, that for example, if we have uh, 
since it is not here, but if we have, for example, like JTS, it have minus 457 in net profit, uh, very poor percent profitable, but very high ER ratio. Like, would you leave it here or would you exclude it here? And if there is probably something else which needs to be done uh, to make decision to exclude or, into, or, or to include it in the future portfolio. Yeah, Jay, you want to hear that? Yeah, Mikhail, I think what you were talking about is exactly what to do. And that's part of what I do is I look at the total net profit um, and look through some of the stuff and the, the winners and losers. Uh, the ER ratio is kind of what we do first. We try to look at that to eliminate some of the ones that just aren't performing well and have a low ER ratio. So we do a lot of times, or at least I do, I'll start with the ER ratio to try to get a list together that way. And sometimes I will throw everything into the portfolio so I can get these other numbers. And then I'll, and that's part of what I have done to sift and weed out some of the lower performing symbols is exactly what you just said look at the total net profit how did it how did it affect the portfolio as a whole and yeah don't always be stuck just on the er ratio well it's still got a good er ratio well it is but um it's just not performing well with this mix of stocks and i have found that there's times where depending on the group of stocks it's with it doesn't perform well and I take it out, but I like that company or I know it, or it has a good ER ratio, then I'll just, I try it with another combination of stocks. And then it, it, it wasn't uh, you know, negative 457. It, it actually was, it was up a little bit, but it just, sometimes they blend differently in it, which is weird. And I, I don't fully understand it, but uh, I, I have known that with my own experience. Yeah. So I have, that, a, I have an answer so, what that happens, Jay. Okay. So, so uh, what happens is, even though th th there's, even though these symbols, like for instance, SLV, I've got in our silver, right? Well, right now this, that trade's rocking and rolling right now. It's got a negative, it's got a negative number on there, but it's adding a lot of positive value. So what'll happen is some of these, so, all right, I got to back up. So we have a portfolio, this is a portfolio concept. And the portfolio concept is we have this pool of assets and some are adding value, otherwise some are cash flowing at the moment and some aren't. And what will happen is a rotation that occurs within the portfolio itself and within the cycle of the trade. So there might be that that particular symbol, even though it has net net loss, it's not a it's not a big loss here. You can see it's a minor loss, but there are times when it adds value even though it's taking some away. So there can't and that's what Jay's talking about when he sees that, is there you know with the with the blend, you can put that in and it doesn't do as as the same. The other thing that is going to affect this number here is the type of allocation strategy. Uh, like for instance, let's just look over here while, while I'm talking about this now. Try to, this is somewhat of a, a concept or a, a complex concept. But if I go over to the trade log, I start to see these reallocation cells. And I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. When you get these reallocation cells, they caught, you can see right here, SLV was being sold here on 7.6. So it sold down that that symbol. So it was taking profits. Of course, knowing knowing what happened today with silver, I'd like to have it back, but it, that's not important. So what's what's going on here is it accumulates in the portfolio. There, there's, and that's what I was trying to bring up on the other screen. Uh, I wanted it's when you start to look at the scatter graph. I, I'm, I'm a couple clicks away, and I'm going to slide it over. It's on my other monitor. And I'll, I'll show you exactly what, I, what I'm talking about here. So w this goes to a couple concepts that I've, I've talked about today. And I'm just, I'm almost there. Bear with me one second. And these are, these, these are not up to, uh, up to date. They're, there's something that's uh, dormant here, but I will bring it up, this whole report here real quick. I'll make it a little bigger so we can all see it. 
So this is a, a this is actually the S and P 500. This is what's called the trade impact chart. So when you start to look at the portfolio, and even though you have a, a stock or a symbol that's in there that may be showing negative, there's going to be times when it's adding value. Like right now, if we took if three weeks ago we looked at SLV and we said, oh, we don't want that in there, but and we didn't do the consideration what Jay just said, which is I actually think and I like silver right now. If I took it out because of a, of that consideration, I would not have the I would not I, I would not have the uh, wouldn't have it in there, and we wouldn't be you know uh, benefiting from what happened in silver today. We had this huge gap breakout, and so the. This scatter graph is, I know it's just kind of, there's so many trades in here. This, this graph, we can actually see exactly what the return is, what type, of, what type of sell it was, different types of things. So this breaks down the internal process. And this is, I brought up, this is all 500 S&P stocks. And, but so the dynamic that's happening, even though it's a negative, is it may add value in cycles. So a trade, there's sometimes you look at a symbol, it may do well, it may be adding value when other stocks aren't. So it's kind of, it's a non-correlated asset will also add value during times, even though it might show a negative return. That may not be the reason to take it out. Boy, that was a, that was a long answer. Did that make sense at all? Made sense to me, so uh, hopefully, Mikhail too. That that sounded good to me. Mikhail, you there? Did that sound okay? It sounded good. Yes, the, 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 I understand what Bob is talking about. Yeah, so there's th that. That's I, I mean, that's the whole point of this portfolio manager, is being able to manage a basket of stocks in a very dynamic way and not have any emotion, but when we're making choices about wh who gets to play and who doesn't. So it's sort of uh, the best way. Remember sports when we used to have those? <laughs> way back when? <laughs> yeah, back back in the day when they used to play sports. Uh, but that it's like a sports team. So we get to decide who plays, and that's what we're talking about here. And maybe that, that player is not very good, but man, that guy's been working his butt off, and he's he's doing he's an up and comer. Even though he's just struck out every time, we'll do baseball, and now now he's really starting to work on his batting skills, and that's why SLV is adding value today because there was some merit to having it in there. Maybe it was as a hedge to the portfolio, or maybe it was some other item. So a lot of these questions and that come up. And when you're trying to solve the problem of what to be in a portfolio, what you have to come up with is actually what is the purpose of the portfolio and is do we have hedge elements? Maybe You could even put inverses in there if you wanted. Um, you know, I was talking, talking to somebody earlier today about figuring out how to take a portfolio, figure out what the, what the net is alpha and do the Greeks on a portfolio and figure out how to do a vertical spread utilizing SPY to neutralize a, an entire portfolio and how much we have to do and those type of things. So this is something I've been wanting to embrace for a lot of years is how, how to hedge, like put a wrapper around the entire environment and then let the models do what they're going to do. But, you know, this, this is a very complex concept and and understanding when you start to operate in a pool of assets versus a single asset and it's really easy to get focused on the single assets and not the dynamics that happen in the portfolio so when we look at this scatter graph this green graph down here below this is all 500 stocks in the s p 500 and it shows how the capital is being deployed you can see over here and 2007, as the market was topping out, the, the models were going to cash. By the time we got to 1014, literally, by the time Lehman Brothers failed, our investment exposure was 7%. And this is all S&P 500 stocks. And then you can see right after that, on 
February, we, we moved up to 15. And as we go up the scale, then it was 53. And then all the way by, you know, uh, you know, during this time, we kept buying more. And you can see the equity curve and what was generated. So we flattened out the curve, uh, no pun intended. <laughs> we flattened the down curve. And then then we we just kept pushing this equity higher. And this this particular strategy hasn't been updated since 19. But I want to just show you the, the dynamics. And then on this particular chart, we even have we even have every symbol. This is a really this is a this breakdown. Is for the experts full version. We don't have access for that. No, this is this is actually on a website. And, and this is something that could be produced for a portfolio expert. I just haven't decided what I'm doing with this. This is uh, I haven't I haven't figured out what to do. So this is not portfolio expert. This is just we a don't have access for that. This is not on the portfolio expert site right now. This is uh, no, but our... this is something I wanted to show you. And and what I really want to build is that you can just bring up reports and see this on any custom portfolio. And we can't it's it just it's yeah, this is actually on a platform called Tableau. This is a data a, a way to view data. But there's a, a lot of elements here that you can you can you can see that you don't normally see. And, you know, we've got some metrics and I, this is what I'm working on in the next level is being able to bring up a report when you build a portfolio and have all of these metrics. So it's got investment histogram, capital preservation metrics. There's some other stuff that we have that we're working on called uh, comfort index, which tells you how much risk you're taking, all that kind of stuff. So there, this, looks there, useful. This, is, this looks very good. So I, uh, it will be very helpful if you bring it up. Yeah, yeah. And it's for right now, it's been on a very, you know, we it's this is old. This is in the archives at the moment, just trying to decide how, how we can do this stuff and and at what scale and. So can you go back to the, uh, the sure. one to the portfolio expert, which we built? And I have one more question, which I sure. came across. Um, while I was doing the analysis, and it also clearly shows in the model, which in the portfolio, which we built as well. So I just wanted to understand your view on that. Uh, it's clearly seen that, uh, and um, I mean, I haven't tested that much yet, but uh, what I came across that uh, mostly like blue chips, like MGM, like, I don't know, silver, GNG, CVS, even Tesla, even though we look in the five year period where it performed very well, actually, uh, they didn't do good in terms of the uh, model. And on the other hand, the stocks, which I didn't know about, like VST, for example, before getting a um, signal from the system. And I don't know, like what else, like three or like CPRT, uh, they actually very uh, good performers. Um, so what's your explanation behind that? Like what's the, what do you, why do you think that blue chips are underperforming in the model and uh, the less known stocks are overperforming? So pretty simple answer actually. Um, I'm gonna quote the first Wall Street movie, they're, they're dogs with fleas. Um, a lot of those those companies, those bl so-called blue chips, don't do anything. Uh, dividend play payers, for the most part, are are dog stocks. There are some good ones, and in fact, the dividend players tend to be some of the stocks that have the most risk known. Like if you go back to 2008, you want to get creamed in 2008. Own dividend stocks. Those were all the financial stocks and. Uh, if you look at who pays the big dividends, those those are usually risky, more that they have a higher risk, and they're they're a whole community of people are like oh get paid for dividends while you wait. Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> you get so, uh, but some of those stocks. That's why we have the ER. You sh you should have been able to look at those and go, you know, those aren't good stocks, and just find them out. And the reason why the other stocks work better, because there's there's stocks. So this is the theory. You want to find a, um, well, not necessarily a micro cap stock, but 
you know, penny stock investing is about what? Finding the next upcoming stock. You buy something at 20 cents and it goes to $10, right? Uh, in the case of small caps, you want a small cap, let's say, a, this is small cap, 800 million, a billion dollar company is a small cap anymore. And so you have a billion dollar company. What you want it to do is to grow to a mid cap, which would be a five or seven billion or and ultimately be a large cap. So you want to, it's because of the growth in these companies and and that's why these those smaller companies symbols seem to work better and then there's other symbols out there that will absolutely trade well but they're more obviously more visible you know and some of these stocks like j and j i remember uh, j and j has never been a, a good stock uh to trade it's just, it's a noisy stock. I'm going to bring up this symbol here real quick. It's just noise. It just goes in a range. There's no, there's no trends. It's a piece of junk from a viewpoint of a trendy. Now, if I went to short-term models, I could probably catch these swings. But on an intermediate model, it's just all noise. It's, it's terrible. And if I, if I went and looked at it in, in the research, you'd see even more. So that's why the ER ratios, that's, you know, it, listen, it might be the best stock and roll. It might have made the best move. But if you're going to use this modeling process to try to capture it, you've got to find the symbols that work best. And that's why we put all these metrics. And so you can see the modeling and look at all the transparency. You know, I tell, I'm going to tell you again, like I have before, is if you get two or three consecutive losers, the next trade is probably going to be a winner. You can look through the stream and bring up the trade log on any of these symbols, and you'll see they'll get two, three. I, I think there's a couple symbols I've seen have five losers, but after three, that it's almost the next trade, the probabilities are so high that the next trade is going to be a winner. And especially if you've got good ER ratios, you look at the returns on an individual symbol, like how much does it make? You know, on average, what are those returns? What's the average loss, the holding periods? It, the whole concept behind this is to, to get a feel. And I used, to, I used to do this, used to travel around and do these seminars, how to become a high percentage trader. And this is what I was talking about, is how to be very selective on the symbols that you choose to deal with. And it's the same thing here is that the the concept is that you want to build build this this thing up under the symbols that have been scrutinized and like we've been talking about then you have it gives it stacks the deck in your favor and and that's uh, most of not most of the allocation process and things we have in here are a gaming theory not portfolio allocation theory it's about how to change and take when you see those reallocation trades, we're actually doing something called top slicing, where we're taking the top off and reallocating money off the top of good trades that are growing into new ideas and new probabilities. And that dynamics of what I was showing you on that page a minute ago is that that graphic of how the symbols are rotating in and out, and what what processes are causing them to do that. Hey Bob, this is Ram. Uh, just to follow up on that little point you made about J and J being a bad, bad stock to uh, you know to put in the portfolio because it goes up and down. To get that kind of insight, is what's the easiest way? For example, like just 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 the screen that you have up right now. You know, I want to look at what happened. Let's say with one of those stocks which uh, had a lot of losers. You know, it would be nice to be able to just get a little trade log for that. And, you know, what was the secret? Like you said, three losers or, you know. Yeah, so. Low, you know, yeah. so just, just see what's happening with that when the trade. So what symbol is uh, catching your eye, Rob? So, like, just just say Tesla, and then you got one winner and five losers, say, you know. Okay. So I want to know what, what just happened there. Uh, you know, why did it lose? So is there a, I, mean, the, I can go to the trade log and get the Excel spreadsheet and then. Out everything well, else. here's where you get it. It's right here, TSLA. It's right on the screen for you. So you, you'll you just go here, click on Tesla, and it's 
this is when Tesla was, when Elon was trying to shoot rockets and he wasn't focused on, truck, on whatever he was doing, uh, Solar City. So we go in here to the model results. And, and so you're going to see this is the equity curve. It actually, yeah, it had out of the last, this year has been a big year, obviously. And obviously there's a, there's a current trade on right now. It's up 401%, right? So this is going to be a huge year, like 600, 700% year. But on these other years, we're looking at this thing waffling around. So you can go to here to full trade log over here on, on the right. Click on that. It'll bring up this box. So you, you can see all of the trades going back to 2010. And you can see a lot of times when these companies start out like this one, wasn't making any money, you get in, it was just whipsawing back and forth. It wasn't until... I don't know, maybe maybe there was an event. I don't know uh, Tesla Tesla event, but in 2013, it got a buy at 36 bucks. Was that when Model S came out or something happened, right? And there was, the company actually had a future. Pri prior to this, uh, I forget what year it was. I think it was 2010 or so. The company was almost bankrupt. And meanwhile, all you're getting is noise and the company didn't do anything. And then, you got a couple of trades here, but so that's why. And, uh, well, actually, what I meant, I mean, this this I understand. I mean, okay. This I'm familiar with. My my question was, how is it doing in my portfolio? Because one of the things is that it may not get bought, at, uh, you know, uh, or it may not rotate in uh, because of the you know the, the uh, slicing, as you said, the game theoretic uh, concept of just taking the, the profits and then rolling it into a new uh, a new symbol. You know, so so the behavior in my portfolio may be a little different from what I see for True. Tesla in your in your True. overall. Absolutely, right. and, and so um, this was this a concept that when we built this, which was as I mentioned, uh, gaming theory. That would be kind of fun. I should bring. Uh, uh, he, who knows? He might. I know he watches my channel a lot, but I should maybe bring my old partner uh, David in and have him talk about the stuff because he he. He was the engineer behind a lot of this this process. We, I was the mad scientist. He was the guy who goes, oh, I, I know how to make that work. <laughs> he goes, I think I know what you mean. Let me see what I can do. That was, uh, and that was what that came up with. So there are some different dynamics. And I, I think we put Tesla in here. So this, I think I can actually demonstrate that, I hope, here. So we go to the trade log. And I'm hoping that there's a Tesla reallocation here we go yeah so right here so even if we looked at it just like what you're talking about we look at the gross of the what what tesla if we look at we go to research and we look at tesla it's up 401 percent right well in this case we sold part of the position and and then uh, let's see here's another sell right up here so we sold ninety three thousand over here on seven six and then on 713, another 38,000 was sold. That was most recent. That was last week, right? So what we're doing then is we're taking those profits. We obviously, in this portfolio we built, as we have more ideas and we have money, so we are raising money. You see there were three allocation sales. We bought blue. So we bought jet blue. We put 143 grand in it. We were short cash for the money, so we raised 10,000 in JKS and Neo. We 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 sold 81,000 of that, and then in Tesla we raised 38. So the Tesla performance, that's this won't be reflected. Now I'm going over to the symbol returns page, when you won't be able to see the impact of the Tesla reallocation cells until we get out of Tesla. So once Tesla exits, it will reflect when we go over here on this list, it's it's not gonna be 73 anymore. It's gonna be a number much greater than that because we're gonna have a, a wherever wherever this trade exits, most likely we'll hang on to a, a, a huge gain. So, that, so, so this is only showing closed positions, the net profit. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so so we don't quite know what it's what it, you know what its current value is if we are to liquidate today. So, well, we do because it's everything's accounted for back in that trade log 
uh, actually in the open. Uh, open positions, open, yeah. yeah, open positions. The previous. Uh, yeah, but you can also do the open CSV. And that, so you're going to get, I think it's going to give us a dates. Let me just see. Uh, it's giving us, let's see here. Uh, it's just giving a number of shares right now. So that would that would have to be converted. So the, I think the open positions above. Yeah, that's going to be the best value there. So you can see exactly what right. what it's going to be. I thought there might be something in that CSV, but yeah. So it's going to show you actually what the percentage is, and that's the current percentage after those sales that I showed you. Okay, so, so it so used I, to be something to bigger. To, to get a better sense of. Yeah, so it shows we have a thirteen hundred dollar profit from the entry point. Okay, so we bought it at three twenty seven. Last price sixteen forty three, a little less than that after today. So thirteen fifteen four hundred one is the gain as of last night. And we keep going. It's a long session, but we keep going. The servers are going to run, and then it's going to shut us out. There is a period of time when the servers run, and we're collecting data, and they're updating. You can still do some things, but you're, it's going to zero out. It zeroes out all of the portfolios, and they'll show zero returns. And then as soon as they're updated around 8.30 Eastern time, that'll come in. But yeah, so all every most everything here, end of day, also end of trade. So you'll see the current values percentage wise here. You can see the the shares and the, the daily values you can you can figure out from that CSV. But this is going to reflect what the returns are and what, what's going on. Yeah, so yeah, so the point I was making was that the, you know this the trade log for the portfolio is a little more subtle and different because you get a one entry, several exits. Right. Uh, you can have some that are still open Correct. or not. Uh, and so I, was, so I was trying to get a sense of, okay, you know, I, to get a clear picture of what's happening with a particular instrument, you know, I, so right now the simple way to do it is to look at the trade log, look at the, uh, the open positions and sort of collate all that. Yeah. Together. Yeah. So, yeah, that, yeah. So there's, it's, it's dynamic because what's, what's happening on this page with the open positions is the basket is changing all the time based on what's going on over here in the trade log. So when these were re out these, so we bought WNS on Monday, right? And we sold these three stocks. We sold Alpha, Auto, Tree, and TVTY. And, and we, our biggest chunk was Auto. And what that means is we're always gonna take the symbol that has grown the most that it, and we're going to chop it back. And so the, if it's a big mover, the two things happen here is one, we're taking profits. The other thing is we're taking that money and putting it into uh, into the WNS trade. And we'll, we'll take a look at that. And it's only only been around for one day. But we're going to take a look at at. So we put all this money, 140,000, we sold these down. So alpha has a smaller position, but it's also, if we, if we looked at that, I suspect it's, it's up quite a bit. That's why it got the most dollars coming out of it because it hit growing the most. It was the largest, it was a larger percentage of the portfolio. So we're going to chop it back. So you downsize the risk, you take profits, and you reallocate the money to a new probability. In this case, a new probability was a brand new buy on WNS. So what's happening dynamically inside of the portfolio is some really cool stuff because we're, we're making new bets with WMS. We're downsizing previous bets and taking profits. And so we're taking, this is where the, the gaming theory comes in. As, It'd be like having, we're playing four blackjack tables and we have some way of of determining that this dealer that we just got onto is 
it's, it's going to be easy to read and we're going to make really good bets over on the new table, which is W and S. And we're just going to take chips off these other tables and, pl and start another table. So there's a pyramiding of the assets that happen, which causes an acceleration of the growth of the assets. And, and one of the things I hope I'm doing these, these long sessions is to understand that there's a dynamic going on in the portfolio mechanism that goes beyond the simple buys and sells and what the symbol made. And it goes back to stuff that Michael was asking about and all of, all of those things that there's a lot of dynamics are happening here. Some stocks are taking away, some are, are adding. And that's even if you go to the modern portfolio theory and you look at a pie chart and you're allocating out the assets, same thing happens there. There's going to be assets in play. There's going to be assets that are out of play. The problem with that theory is it's it's static, and so you're subject to how that how how that balloon is going to contract and grow over time. In this case, if we get one that starts to shrink too much, we just get out of it. We just go to cash. We'd rather be in cash and not let it. We're going to stop it from taking too much money away at some point when the trends fail, and then. When the new ideas come out, then we just take that cash and we redeploy it. So there's a whole lot of things when you're running a basket. That's why when you get to, let's just call it 15, 20 stocks, that's why you start to get this very dynamic rotation. You want to update your constituent list, bring in new ideas. You want to make all that stuff, you know, all that stuff uh, part of the process. And folks that hung around me for a long time, I always talk about process over attitude and opinion. The process is stock selection, reviewing. You should review your portfolios monthly, quarterly, and at some stage you should update the stocks in there. And typically, just as a general sense, we're going to tell you, it, let's, let's just go to this open, open position. Wait, I want to go to the summary page first. Now, so we... Um, Right now, we have 18 stocks that in total in this set, and there's 14 of them are long. So there's four symbols that, that don't have positions right now. So if I were going to do an update right now, I would leave the 14 trades on. I wouldn't let them go unless some of them were really long in the tooth. And, or, and then I would just replace four symbols in this portfolio to refresh. I'd if they, if they weren't long right now, it's time to look at it. I'd go look and do some of the things we talked about earlier is reviewing symbols, looking exactly at what symbols do I like. Or, you know, am I buying low, trying to sell high? You know, what, what are the position, what are the ERs, all that. And I'm going to find four new players for this team. And I'm going to take the four that have no position right now and just throw them out. I might, I might like two of them. I could keep two, replace two. But those are the type of decisions that you make. And you refresh your constituent list and you walk forward a process. So theoretically, what, I, what I've been teaching for many, many years, for over 20 years using this process, is that you want to have a theme. You want to have a general idea of what type of stocks make it in a strategy. And if you just do them random all over the place, this, that, and the, you know, whatever. Maybe it's maybe it's a growth strategy. So you're looking for growth stocks, and you really don't care if you end up in. You know, you really don't you don't you don't care if you end up really concentrated because you have a sell discipline and you you have those type of things. But you may decide I don't want to be concentrated. I don't want more than thirty percent in this particular spectrum. So that is the best way to go about doing this so that you have a context of what your strategy is. We actually tell people, this is something I don't think I brought up, is to write up a, a mission statement for the portfolio. Like I want to be a value, a value strategy with some, whatever it is, you write it up and then that drives your narrative of what stocks you, that, you, that you produce. And some folks that we've met over the years have a very strong bias toward value. Some are growth. 
Some are GARP, which is growth at a reasonable price. It can be all kinds of things. And you build a constituent list, and that's the mutual fund where you're, if you read it, the basics, if you go to Fidelity and pull up a mutual fund, it's going to tell you the general idea behind the mutual fund and what it's going to do or what, it, what the manager is looking at. And, and when, you, when you do that, then you, you, know, you look at that, they tell you what it's going to do. That's kind of the same situ, uh, suggestion that I'm making here is come up with something that makes sense. It doesn't matter what it is. You, you, you can make it up. Um, we, we've got a couple of people we've dealt with in the past. One guy that's coming to my mind right now is brilliant at coming up with strategy names and ideas and concepts. Jason's actually really good with that. He's come up with some really interesting strategies. I was wondering if you were, I'm sorry to cut in. I was wondering if that's who you're getting at. Or no, asking, no, there's somebody else. Me, right? no, 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 oh, you, but there's somebody Not else me? out there. Oh, come Not on. You. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll go away. I got to be <laughs> no, humble. No, no, <laughs> no you, are, you are one, but we, we've got folks out there that have built a lot of stuff for a lot of years, running, you know, advisory firms with, you know, fifty, hundred million dollars that they're managing for other people, and and you know, there's some really good concepts out there, and this this is, you know, my my excitement, we'll call it, in bringing out a product like this to the public is giving the opportunity to to think a little differently. It's not just about you know, where's the S and P going? Is it going to all time new high? Is it doing whatever? It, that that stuff that stuff's cool and fun. I I do it every night on the channel. You know I I I like that kind of analysis. But when we start digging into portfolios, then you get into all the dynamics that we're talking about. And when I'm I'm glad that I've opened up the portfolio manager because that's the crux. That's what this thing is built to do is to manage baskets of stocks and. Like I said before, today we just built them one with just intermediate. We could have, we could have put, you know, short-term ideas in there too. We could have mixed it with daily and weekly, and then we have a whole nother dynamic that gets created. Going back to what Michael was talking about earlier, is, you know, looking at stocks and rotation and what's likely to, you know, what, what's, you know, what. Maybe some of the short-term ideas are taking away and adding, but you can kind of go go through all that stuff. Yes. So somebody, I I see there was some stuff going on here. There's a subscription button here. If you want to see all the pre-built, you can choose them right here. Somebody was asking that on the YouTube channel. So yeah, you can just go in here and there's a bunch of pre-built. We're going to be Jason doesn't know this yet because I haven't talked to him, so he's finding out with everyone else. But I want to—we're going to update this list. This was more aimed at the advisory community, so we're going to be updating this list here. This so, is brand new information. It is brand new, <laughs> late breaking now, news. <laughs> now you know what he's going to be doing. <laughs> you be prepared to stay up late. We're going to work on this. I can um, get I him. To, have, I, I can get him to do anything right now. He just got his car out of the shop, so I know. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm going to go for a drive. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I do have some questions, but I didn't want to break your no, concentration go ahead. That's on this fine. topic. Um, if we could, uh, some of the questions in on the YouTube channel is wanting to, and I found some symbols to put into that portfolio I just created, trying to generate a couple of buy orders so that they can see where to find it and how to look it up and stuff. Okay. So do you want me to just go to the, the list that comes out at night? Um, I actually, I found a couple to try to make it easier. Mm -hmm. Um uh, on the fly, as you were talking, I found I found a few, and then I, I mean, tested it on one. How much can it be? Okay, so you found some good symbols. <laughs> well, no, I wasn't trying to pick like high performance. I just grabbed some of the A's and B's, but I was in case you you were not able to get to it. I thought, well, let me just find a few that. Uh, okay. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, but are you, or are you going to put it in the portfolio so they could see on their portfolio list? Oh, I see what you're talking about. Okay, yeah, let's just update that one that we made. Okay. That's, oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, we're, we're going to go in here. So you see our test 721 is one we built. 
We're going to hit mod over here. We're just going to make it easy. Go straight to the, the portfolio manager here. And I'm going to go down to here. And, and so these will actually daily? be, yeah, yeah, daily 3.2. Okay. All right. Go. Uh, ADXS. So uh, Alpha Delta X ray Sierra. I just want to make sure I get that right so I don't give you a weird thing. Uh, AEM. Okay. Then, then A. AIM, so not two A's. <laughs> I think that may have been what I did before as I kind okay. of said it. So yeah, then well, A, or go ahead. Go ahead. A, A M R X, um, I'm sorry, A M R K. All right, but that's enough. It'll, that, that's enough. Okay, yeah. yeah, it just gives a. Yeah, okay. so um, what a reason why I'm worried about the server starting and this won't run. We're getting late. Yeah, we're day. getting a little close. To, yeah, yeah, we're getting close to that. Yeah, so, I think we have a little more time. So I put in, you'll see up here now, there's some Ds uh, daily. So I'm just going to go next. I want to get this run because we are getting close for the servers to kick off here as we've been on forever. I didn't even realize how late it was getting. We're having yep. so much fun here. Yeah, I know. So anyway, now you see the portfolio is queued up. And we're going to hit the OK button at the top. And so we'll be able to see the buys and what they look like. It's loading symbols. Next click, it's done. Updating stats. And now it's run. Okay, so, wow. Well, Look at all those orders. Yeah, I didn't you know, know generate that many. Well, it's rebalancing. Or, it's full. That's what, okay, okay. Yeah, so I, that's, that's okay. makes sense. So let's go to orders. This could be a lot of orders. So here's your new buys. And this actually goes to everything I was just talking about. You got... Here's here's the new buy. It's going to look like this, and it's going to tell you the current is zero, so it doesn't own anything right now, and it wants you to buy five percent of your portfolio tomorrow morning. So I've got a hundred thousand. That's five thousand five hundred dollars of stock, and or yeah. So then we look down, well, we, our, our portfolio was filled up, so we didn't have any cash, so we had to go in and we sold Amgen and Alpha and Auto and a whole bunch of these stocks because we had, so we had to raise the capital to do that. Now, when the servers run in a few minutes, since I put these in, we'd actually be able to see those being filled and all the orders done. Right now, these are pending orders and then on open positions, None of those new symbols show because they haven't hit yet. But in a few minutes, they're going to. So um, let me just look at something. All right, guys. Well, we spent a ton of time. Can we do a uh, one last question kind of thing? And just for, just for YouTube's sake, if you guys are watching here, if you could smash that like, that would be cool. I'm just looking to see if I'm getting emails from the servers yet. The good news, we've had some folks signing up while we're talking. That's good. Yes, we did. Um, okay. Yeah, nothing yet, but we're get, we're getting close. I think within the next few minutes, we're going to kick off the servers. Anyway, folks, uh, one last question. Anyone? Don't be shy. Come on. I should put my my uh, Ferris Bueller. Anyone? Anyone? Is that Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> Too bad that I dominated, so I don't. I have one, but I don't want to ask it. Well, you made up for lost time, Michael. I just signed up, but I look forward to using the platform. And appreciate the the time that you're you're giving us to help walk us through this. Yeah, no, listen, man, this is this is real stuff. You guys should know this. Um, maybe you don't, but I'll tell you, is that this is like the the ability which to to give you guys a way to really manage money and and do this is like exciting for years i've done this through advisory firms and 
I thought that was a way to affect the public the best. Um, and I, we still do that. So one of my customers are listening. We still love you. Uh, it's nothing like that. It's, it's that the ability, there's so many people out there that are just randomly getting caught in the mess of, of the YouTube hypesters out there. For sure. You know, and yeah. it, there's a lot of them. <laughs> and I, and I, I'm not one of them. I don't try to be a hypester. I don't, I don't, you know, come on. Hey, what's up guys. And I don't do that. You know, um, I try to have my channel to present some, some good, well thought out videos. And I think that's why we're all here. And i never spent a dime and, you know, we're pushing on 20,000 subscribers. So that's pretty, my friends that have built channels tell me that's pretty impressive. So I'm glad to do that. That is impressive. I think I discovered you first through, uh, Steve Collegian. Oh, okay. To... Yeah. Steve's good friend. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's all. That's how I found you, but yeah, I'm excited and I uh, look forward to incorporating this into my my trading and investing. Yeah, good deal. So, are you a ticker talker subscriber? Uh, I am. Okay. Um, I'm not like super active on it, but there's uh, I pop in and out like I would say weekly uh, just to check out content. They've they've got great guests such yeah. as yourself, um, and I like. I like watching Steve trade. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. uh, Steve Steve knows everybody. Yeah. Not somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. talking to a friend of mine. I go, listen, Clayton knows everybody. He, not somebody, everyone. Right. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, he's a great guy. So, we yeah, hang out in Vegas yeah. together. We've had a lot of good times. So. Nice. Yeah, I got hooked on your videos and I got some friends. I, I helped spread the word. And you're growing pretty organic, like crazy. So yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is crazy. And quality and you know, um, it's a big difference than all that other. You know, a lot of that other stuff on YouTube is pretty dangerous. I think for new investors to get hooked, like follow. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, like Portno. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all that shit is crazy. It, nothing worse than a guy with a hundred million dollars in his pocket throwing money around trying to act exactly. like everybody can do that, right? Afford to, but I don't think his followers can afford to. So. No, no, yeah. they can't. Yeah, it's kind of kind of crazy. But he's a crazy guy, and he's witty and funny. But you know, yeah. entertaining for, for him, you know. Yeah. Well, he's got nothing else to do. Like I said back in the day when we used to play sports. So. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, any any anybody else? I appreciate it, man. Really do. Sure. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot, Bob. Thanks a lot for all your time. Very useful again. And uh, my observation is that your system is very different from everything else uh, which is available out there because you actually have a system and a model and a very complex model and statistics behind it other than just feelings and uh, just uh, like others just basically day trading uh, things where you just hope to make it big and here uh, what I like most about it is that there is actually a, a well thought through and well tested system behind that which helps make this yeah really really appreciate that comment and that is yeah yeah, yeah so I just just wanted to add to Mikhail's comment is it's the most important thing for me is it's transparent because I'm a skeptic when I start. <laughs> I got, I've got to see this for myself and try and figure out what the numbers are, why it works, so how it works, what it did, what it didn't do. And so that, that's really I helpful. would I would have never thought you were that guy, Ron. <laughs> well, I had, to, I had to tell you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, listen, I think everybody should be like that. And that's why we, we present like this. I, I decided... You know, listen, I don't know, we, we picked up people watching us on YouTube. We've had a bunch of people sign up while we were talking, and I didn't even do advertisements, you know. Um, I think I did one. We probably should have had this thing on the on the line so you can actually see it. We'll have to, we're not very good marketers. We're, we're, we're getting better. But the, the point of it is, yeah, everybody should be skeptical, and, and that's why the transparency is there. That's why we have... Every symbol in a database has a rating on it. 
you can see, you know, how how dangerous symbols are. It's like we're looking at J and J. It's just on an intermediate be- basis, it's junk. It's terrible. It's always been drunk. That's just one of those symbols, you know. And, and matter of fact, the the dogs of the Dow are junks for the most part. Or they're all they're all dogs with fleas. So yeah, you want you want them, you you know. There's there's a lot of opportunity out there, you know. Just a, a comment on what I think is going to, you know, what I'm hoping to happen. And we'll do one market comment, kind of in that mode, is is what I would like to see is the market actually doesn't have to go down a lot, you know, maybe a five, seven percent correction. But I'm I'm looking, I've got up on the screen here the 81.92 percent bullish. I'd like to see this this short term database just get blown up. I'd like to see it at 36 or 30 even, where everything just rolls over and pukes it out. There's going to be an amazing amount of selling opportunities for for trading. But when that happens and then it recycles, what we just talked about is probably three months in time for it to roll over, recycle. Then there's going to be, I believe, another really good round of short-term buys that come out of this. Now, maybe there's a, a bigger, maybe there's a bigger correction coming. I'm all, I'm all good with that. And, and the difference is, you know, people are always trying to make me right and wrong on the channel. You look at some of the comments. Most of them are, are pretty respectful and good, and I appreciate it. You know, you get, you got to have the trolls. And, and But the, the thing that, that I think is uh, important, I guess, is just that, you know, trying to keep that consistency. And, and like I've told you guys, when I do my daily research, I do it the same way every day. It's part of it's part of what I do. And I've been I've been writing daily commentary since wow. Uh mostly on, some off, but I've been doing that since nineteen eighty six. That's a long time. And there's only been a few periods of time that there hasn't been hasn't you know I haven't been doing any kind of commentary and when when we used to travel remember that when we used to go on trips <laughs> now, um, I would uh, you know I'm there with my laptop I used to write commentary every night now I don't know what I'm going to do with this YouTube channel I, I guess I'm I, I don't know how I, I take any nights off you guys are going to freak out on me so I, I haven't figured out how to deal with doing trips again. I can't see me in a hotel room doing a YouTube video. So, uh, but hopefully we'll do that someday. All right, folks. This is Richard from um, Berlin here. It's uh, 1 a.m. And um, when you started broadcasting these webcasts a couple of months ago, it was really way over over my head, but you can really sense the quality and uh, in, in your in your analysis and what you're, you're you're sharing with us, so it's worth staying up till one in the morning for it. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I stay up I stay up one o'clock in the morning so I can get you the the videos early in the morning your time. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, I typically I try to I try to get my, the videos plan is to get it out before uh, before London opens. That's the plan. And you guys are CET, right? Um, yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm all uh, invested in the in the U.S. stock, so plenty of time to to go through the buy signals and do a little research before the opening bell. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, so I mean that's the beauty of having the wave tech folks is being able to you know have have a view of all these all these ideas that are out there. And like I said, mm-hmm. this this database is maxed out right now on a short term basis, and it's. It, I really I I'm just so anxious to see it blowing up. And the intermediate term I'm clicking over. I'm still live on screen. The intermediate terms at sixty one point four five. That might back up five or six percent maybe, in that kind of mode, but that's going to refresh the entire market. So it, that's. 
that's what we're going to need to to go go forward. And and anybody that uh, I'm flashing over, I, I talked about in last night's video that this new leadership hasn't changed. You see, they all these spreads I put on the screen these are daily uh, spreads. Those all kicked back in to a degree last night. There's still some some work to do. The other day was uh, pretty exciting from the standpoint of how these spreads are starting to move. But this this is, I think, the beginning of the new leadership is still out there. And the interesting thing is that small cap did pretty good last time I looked. I don't really have a good contact. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, no, I pr appreciate that. And I appreciate you staying up. And that's awesome. And um, just one last thought for me, from me, Bob, for you to, and Jason to think about that. Like my main problem right now with that. Uh, is that uh, the system is uh, uh, given uh, even right now in the slow mode, like not taking into account the situation where it was like 2,500 symbols, which were crazy. Um, like it's still given so many uh, ideas that um, it's uh, it's very time consuming. It's like I, I don't. I, I, I'm always late, like I, I always have to catch up, I, like I miss two days and like I have like these two days to work through. Uh, so if you could think about some ideas how to simplify the process to, uh, I, I actually planning to send you my Excel spreadsheet, which I did with Array, trying to rate the opportunities. Uh, but you will see from it that uh, it's just so time consuming to fill up the, all this information which the system provides uh, yeah. to us. And, and that's actually the, the solution that we've always presented for that is to actually build a constituent list and stuff that you're following. If you're looking for new ideas, that's just, you know, that one way to do it is maybe to run that, you know, do the report builder and try to, you know, maybe pull some stuff out of the system that way. Because, like, I mean, there are... The problem with me is that the consistent list would limit me to like blue chips, you know, and I would miss on all those VCT type of things. So what I'm trying to do right now, I'm trying to follow the entry signals and uh, find uh, new ideas there, you know. That's why I'm like every day I go through all the entry signals, uh, just basically looking for good ERs. Uh, to put them on my consistent list. So I'm kind of in the process of building the new consistent list. Just cross the old one out and doing the new one based on that daily and weekly signal. Well, I, I, I'm hearing you. I'll, I'll, I'll think about that and if something comes up and a way to filter filter these trades. And I get, I'll, I'll send you my Excel sheet and if you would like to some yeah. information I will be happy to give it to you, but I okay. tried to put some uh, rating system uh, based on the information, uh, solely on the information which comes out of the of your system. So okay. uh, I was interested. In, like it's working very good for me for now. Okay, I'm just that's awesome. Whether it's not the market condition which make it work good, whether it's uh, I, I, I'm just not sure that it will be systematic. I'm just not sure that I put the right weights to the uh, different pieces of information uh, information I'm getting. Get. Right, right. No, um, no, that's that's good. I'd like to see that, and because that that is that is an age old question, actually. Is you know trying to come up with a a filtering list. I. Actually, been talking to somebody recently that we're going to be actually doing some interesting things, even taking the output, uh, large sampling of output, and actually running some AI looking for some some stuff. You know, we're 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 starting to do some data mining at another level that maybe will be helpful. But I definitely want to see your ideas, and if you send that, that would be that would be really good. And, and I would tell you, uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, Jay will send you an email and give you an email address that so it doesn't get lost. Right now, the info at Kendall Report is a pretty basically blowing up 
email box. It's impossible to look at. I'll email it to Jay as well, so like we'll, we'll get to one of you. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that because, uh, you know, that info box is just crazy. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's pretty crazy. There, there's just so much going on in there, and it's. I just look at it, and start laughing. Uh, and once again, I want to bring the idea back that I brought a couple of weeks ago is that I think it will be very useful if we come up with some uh, group in Telegram or we started one in WhatsApp, which is very small for now, like for three or four of us just joined it. Uh, but it will be helpful if we start some type of exchange where we could split the forces, where one could analyze D1, another could analyze D3, another could analyze week one, week three, so like, you know, uh, it's more or less involved and like we don't need, all of us don't need to do the same analysis, you know, like yeah. kind of join force. I know that you are thinking about that and I know that I understand that this is your idea behind it, but in, in any case, if you, if you want any help from us, I'm sure we could be helpful in organizing that. Yeah, uh, we, we're looking at doing a membership that, you know, very small entry fee, not uh, just the problem with the memberships like on YouTube is they you, you have to get someone to pay. So we're talking about some nominal fee to, to get in if and and we're we're, we're working on that because that might be one of the best places. YouTube has made it almost you almost wonder why anyone has a website anymore with all the elements that they are putting in on the YouTube channels now. And when you get uh, like I said, when you get to uh, uh, creator status where I'm at right now, uh, there's a whole nother level at 100,000 subscribers. I'm, I, I think we're on path to get there eventually. And But even at, at the level I'm up now, there's a lot of things that I have available to me that we're looking at. We were reviewing them over the last couple of days that would potentially facilitate exactly what you're talking about. So... And I'm also glad no one complained. I know we're in 1080p, so that's good. I fixed that. And anyway. Yeah, yeah. that's made a big difference. I noticed that last week we corrected that, and it, it was awesome. <laughs> no yeah. complaints. Yeah, and I, uh, Vong, I, I, I hear you. I don't want to charge anything, but I'm not sure they're giving us the option for a free membership. So I, I agree with that. So. But I it's not a problem for many of us. I mean, uh, we, the value that the, this brings is much higher than uh, the costs that you are putting on it right now. So, I mean, uh, let, 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 let's just start it, and I'm, I'm sure it will be enough people who will join. It. Yeah, I, I think I think there will, and and then it'd be nice to have some agendas. And my what I want to do, really, uh, Jay, Jay and I've talked about a lot is I want to have a conference. I want us humans to congregate together again. <laughs> and I want to have a big conference and do some really, we, we used to do these years ago and we had some big events and it would be really fun to get folks in a room and, uh, you know, and really be able to teach and do breakout sessions and do a bunch of stuff that I, I would really like to do, and it'd be fun to get that. Uh, unfortunately, with the amount of COVID cases, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, I, I posted on our governor's uh, thing. I, I know I'll get some trolls on me on this, but this is the only virus you have to get tested to find out if you have it. I had swine flu. I had, I had H1N1, and I guarantee you I didn't need to be tested to know I had that shit. <laughs> I was, I thought I was dying. So, and I, and I know there's a, a, there's a lot of folks that have lost their life. So, but um, uh, it's, it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. And it's hard to tell what's real and what's not anymore, unfortunately. So, yeah. So, and you're down in Florida, right? I was, but I'm now back to Russia for a couple. Oh, oh you are. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I'll be back in a month or so, the second half of August. Okay. So you're you're one of my Russian clients then. I didn't I am. I am. Yeah. I've I've got I've I've got 
not a lot, but I've got a bunch of Russian clients, which is kind of cool. So I will bring more on board. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. And, and I was getting worried, Mikhail, you weren't replying to, I tried to call you once and left a voicemail, I believe, and I emailed you. I was like, oh gosh, what happened to him? Where is he? No, I was getting worried. My US phone number is off right now. That's why. That makes total sense. <laughs> And I showed this product to a couple of bankers in Russia because I'm very involved with them. I know by like we owned the bank uh, some time ago before like they changed the system, the, the banking system to government controlled system. Uh, but I showed it to a couple of bankers and they were very excited. And like the interface uh, wasn't uh, the thing they were worried about at all. So, and, uh, like the, I'm sure that they like. They, they, they were honest to tell me that they have not seen anything uh, of same sophistication in their life, and they're managing like pretty big bank. Well, they need to look at the uh, portfolio expert product. I showed it to them as well. I showed oh, it to them. Okay. As well. They're looking into it. Right now. All righty. Well, excellent. So. Um, Okay. Well, folks, I got a call coming. That's it. Thanks again. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow we got another long session to hang out tomorrow at the uh, live stream. So uh, we will we will see you all then. Thanks again. Thanks smash it. Thank you guys. Yep. Really smash the like button on the YouTube, folks. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bob. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. You, you guys Cheers. have a good evening. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Jane. <laughs> Take care. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. You're, you're welcome, Mikhail. Take care. Bye. I replied to your email, by the way, so you have it on your email. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. We'll get in touch with each other. Take okay. care. Uh, yeah, I'll give you my. I'll send you my Russian uh, my number. You could call on WhatsApp there. Oh, okay. I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah, that's what was happening. I was trying to call your number and it wouldn't even let me l leave a voicemail or something. It said it was unavailable. So yeah, send you my uh, other numbers, which are always working. In okay. Sounds good. All, All right. right. Everyone okay. that's still there. Thank you guys for watching and we'll, we'll talk to everyone tomorrow. So, Ram, if you're still out there, take care. But yeah, thank you, Mikhail. We'll talk later. I'll email you back.